Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Sally O'Malley. I'm proud to say I'm 50 years old. I'm not one of those gals who's afraid to hide her age, unlike some other gals. And I like to kick, stretch, and kick. I'm 50. Oh, baby. Yep, you might be going, what the hell was that opening? And what, who, 50 years old? Well... We got a 50-year-old here How at the desk. That? Oh, baby, happy birthday. I didn't bring Marilyn Monroe in to sing you happy birthday or anything. Sorry. Come on, man. No, it's COVID Who's rules. Who's Sally I O'Malley? Get, I, couldn't get, I, couldn't get, I couldn't get that in here. So, <laughs> Sally O'Malley, SNL. All right. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. it's okay. But happy birthday, Thank big guy. You. We yeah. were trying to try to play like we didn't remember your birthday. Ah. And other producer... Yeah. Less smart producer than Pete Demolitis, because Pete's smart and yeah. all that. Yeah, he is. Matt Casey sends the group text to you on the group. Happy birthday, Paul <laughs> Lulu. Like, shut up. Matt's we got were a lot to think about, up. though. He's yeah. responsible for a lot of well, content. Well, don't think about birthdays. Think about the damn content. Yeah. But happy birthday, man. Thank you. Awesome. It's great to see. I mean, you're a great dude. It's been Thanks. fun working it's with a, you. Yeah, this I, is a highlight each week. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, what about, uh, what do we got planned? Anything special this week, this weekend, tonight? What's going not on? a lot. It's kind of a, a, a product of middle of the week. I mean, Wednesday is not a great time to celebrate. And even right. though there seems to be light at the end of the tunnel, we are still in this pandemic. So having people over wasn't a big option. So yeah. a couple people over on the down low, fire out front, and just kind of hang out and take it easy. Okay, that's going to be yeah. tonight or this weekend? That is tonight. Tonight, okay. That Aaron, is tonight. What, what's, what's the drink of choice for a old veteran like yeah. yourself on a night like tonight? Bourbon. Bourbon? Yeah. Okay. So fill it up, you know, you know maybe halfway. Talk about these glasses later. Yeah. Sip on it. Hopefully, uh, hopefully keep it under control. Okay. You go that way, or don't go under control. Well, I mean, so you're 50. I'm 50 now. I know. Well, yeah. I, I, I don't yeah. bounce back. Quite you can like get I out of control to. in a hurry, right? And you definitely yeah. can. I, I feel you there, definitely. Uh, you, you look good for 50, though. Well, thanks. You're I don't really know if good. I always feel it. But. You've aged a little bit, yeah. and we do have yeah, some sure. documentation on that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Whoa. Who was I mad at? Whoa. Look at two. I'm 6'3". Damn well, it. Well, damn, you should have talked to Iowa. I mean, That's it's not us. That's a bad us. angle. It's not That's our... a bad angle for that picture. What are you? I, I really are you a male chance. model? What do you only turn left? What do you mean it's a bad angle? First, that, that's horrific. I mean, what I really love about this picture right here, and I'm yeah. sorry if you're not watching on YouTube, you're not going to get to see Paul Burmeister in his days at <laughs> Iowa at 62214. But I really love the popping of the neck. Yeah. You know, you're, you got the whole... I'm Paul Burmeister. Right from I'm a, a meathead rack. quarterback for Iowa. Yeah. I like how you're sticking it out, Johnny Meathead style. I'd like to go back to that moment and see what, what the person who's taking that picture said to me right before. I mean, I, I look kind of angry. Well, I mean, that's like young football face, though. That's like what you always look did tough. when you were young. Yeah, look gotta look stupid. tough. Gotta look tough. Yeah. It wasn't until like late in my college career where I felt like finally like. Listen, I'm not even the top 20 toughest on this team. What am I? What am I? What am I pretending? I'm going to give a big smile and look like I'm just happy to be here. Right? I'm over the tough talk. So I think uh, I yeah. smiled early in my career, and later I thought I should be. I, I should be a little more tough be, and serious. Yeah, yeah, right. That was bad. I can tell you though. I know you just turned 40 this past summer. Yeah. 50 is a whole different game. I now. bet. I bet. I, I I do feel the lack of recovery thing. Yeah. You know whether I party too hard. Right. Go to sleep too late and yes. haven't partied and then the other thing I feel is like working out yeah. like working out my body definitely does not recover like I still have this mindset that I'm like 28 or 30 and I'm like <laughs> we'll just work out every day and do things yeah and I'll get to the end of the week and I'm like man my body I'm just sore yeah. and exhausted what's and I'm like well dick face you worked out for six <laughs> days in a row like you're still training right? for the nfl so i i, I pay attention you. to that one the yeah. word of the wise i was mid-40s and had that same thought and blew out a couple discs in my back Ooh. so don't get to that point i know so i got big phil for me in that that's okay. where he always reminds me of like don't you don't have to go too heavy yeah because i've seen him he's johnny squat rack yeah and he's gotten three back surgeries and right. it's like well you you're still squatting like you're playing in the nfl at 50 years old so yeah. no wonder yeah uh, yeah but we're, we're gonna have big phil today yes and just again happy I birthday appreciate man. That. That, that, you're the man seriously very nice of you yeah so yeah 50. 50. yeah oh, big okay. breath oh. little uh <laughs> little hour and a half <laughs> reprieve from, from thinking about being 50. All right, so, good. This is a nice break in the day. It's a gift. And uh, free agency coming next yeah, week is a we gift go. for NFL News, kind of mix in with, with all the draft evaluation we're doing. So 
we kind of thought today, in addition to Big Phil, we would go position by position, yeah. free agency wise, kind of hit some of the bigger names, right? Uh, the marquee names at the certain groups. We'll spend a little more time there, but we will try and touch on every single group. You okay with talking about wide receivers first? Yeah, you want to start with wide receivers? Yeah, let's do That's it. That's what Pete has here listed. Yeah, he's the boss. I'm, okay. I'm all for it. I was surprised Kenny Galladay. I was too. Not going to be tagged right. by the Lions. A lot of names to get to here, but I want to start there and get your reaction to the fact that they're just going to let him go. Uh, I mean, that was one of the shocker of the day yesterday as far as guys that, you know, there was a few that got tagged where I went, ooh, I didn't think that would happen. Cam Robinson, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, but it makes sense, I get it. Kenny Galladay was one I just looked at and went, you know, I know they got Hawkinson as a good tight end. You know, the wide receiving core, though, in general, with Marvin Jones being a free agent, right. it's not real impressive there yeah. in Detroit. And, you know, I look at Galladay again. You know, we have this talk a lot. You know, he's, he's a top 10 to some people, a fringe top 10 type of receiver, and a big play receiver at that. I think yeah. that's the big thing. The one thing that pops to my mind here, and again, I have no inside info with this. I just wonder if they know something more than we do about his physical mm. Because um, he was not, hurt last year. I know, the injuries. Is there something there that they look at that they think there's a problem down the road? I don't know that. I'm just speculating as somebody that follows the sport. But I am shocked because he can really do it all at the position. Yeah. Deep, deep threat, 50-50 jump balls, you know, good route runner, runs over the middle. He really is what you want. So, uh, yeah, that's surprising, especially they bring Jared Goff in. That, I thought that, they'd want him to just was, support that a little. That was my thought. In right. addition to – I know he was injured last year. Yeah. But he's been very productive there. I know. And their biggest investment, this new group they're leading the charge, is in the quarterback and Jared Goff. Right. You would think his number one asset – would be Galladay. Yeah, I get you. And they have a lot of ego, a lot of what they're going to do in the next three or four years wrapped up in Goff's success. Yeah. It, it, this one just surprises me a lot, not just for his production, but because of what they think they might get out of Goff. It, it, to me, it just speaks more than anything. I think that the, 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 the Lions are in a total teardown rebuild, I think, kind of. That's what I kind of look at it. Is like, like, you still want to win four or five I games. know, I know. But I think they're just looking at it like, listen, we don't like anything the last regime did in here. Right. You know, hey, we might like Kenny Galladay, but holy crap, dude, we got hill holes to fill all over the place here. And with their coaching staff, right, Dan Campbell, and you got Anthony Lynn as the offensive coordinator. The other thing I just do look at is that they're going to be a run-first football team. Mm. It's going to be smash-mouth football, you know, boots, play actions, things like that. Maybe they let Galladay test the market and see where it's at and get back in this thing, but I was a little surprised. I'm going to guess someone's going to pay him pretty well, so that's the next level with yeah, Galladay. right. What do you think he's worth? Uh, I mean, he would be the guy I'd look at at the wide receiver position out of all the all he's the free agents. The guy. I, I mean, I think he's the guy I look at. You know, as far as being able to break the bank. Mm -hmm. Yes, he is the guy. He he is. You know, to me, he's in that range of eighteen million a year or something like that. Again, I think when you look at it as a whole. You know, is he a top five talent? No, I don't look at it that way. Maybe but, top 10? But yes, he's certainly maybe top 10. There's no doubt about that. Like we've always said, there's 20 top 10 yeah, receivers right. in that conversation. Like legitimately, I'm not even trying to be funny. But I think with, within that point too. Point well taken. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's a lot. You're going to have different coaches who are going to see it a different way. Oh, well, no, I like this kind of receiver for this offense. Oh, I like this kind of receiver. So it's going to be all over the place. But I would think between his big play ability and everything like that, yeah. When you really look at the list out there and hit some of the names, I think he is the crown jewel of uh, free agency this year at wide receiver. You know, you got the Corey Davises of the world, certainly, that are out there. Uh, Juju Smith-Schuster is going to be up there and command money. But, I, you know, again, the one thing I'll say, as compared to Juju or Corey Davis or, hey, an aging T.Y. Hilton or mm -hmm. A.J. Green, Galladay is the one guy I look at to just go, no, no, clear-cut number one receiver yeah. in the NFL and a guy you can base your offense around. Other guys, hey, are still number ones, yes, but they're older in age. Juju, I don't think, is a clear number one. I think he's a high level two. Mm. Corey Davis, I kind of look at it the same way. He's kind of a 1B, maybe a number two, just in that range. So, yeah, Galladay is the one I look at to get paid big time. Let's say you are a GM somewhere in the NFL. Yeah. Let's paint the picture this way. You have your number one receiver. Right. You have a good quarterback. You're not going to go out and get Galladay. But you want one of these quality receivers yeah. that can play outside. Maybe he can play in the slot a little bit. Right. And Galladay's off the board. Which one are you going to go after the most? Yeah, well, okay. So, you know, like when we're talking like 
right, like value signings, mm -hmm. okay, under the radar, guys you might not know about or aren't going to get mainstream. All right, the first guy I'm going to tell you that I'm in love with in the wide receiving group this year, and listen, I, I still think T.Y. Hilton's got mileage. Mm -hmm. I like Corey Davis. You've probably heard me say this before. I'm a huge Curtis Samuel fan. Mm. I'm a huge Curtis Samuel fan. This day and age in the NFL, when you talk about the speed sweeps, big playability, you know, can take it over the top for an 80-yard touchdown, can get a speed sweep or reverse and turn the corner for a 70-yard touchdown. That, to me, is special. There's just some of the real elite skills with Curtis Samuel. He has a true explosion. So he's a guy that I look at that, yeah, he's not in the mainstream names of the superstar receivers, but has some superstar qualities that I like. And then the other guy that I'll just say is, you know, under the radar. Then this is really, like, where I would go, ooh, that's a good signing. Like, this guy's not a star, but... Man, he's a good, solid number two. Or if you have a really good two, two receivers already, you'd go, wow, that's an awesome third to get. I'm a big fan of Rashard Higgins mm -hmm. out of Cleveland. I just think he has it all. You know, there's, a, there's size, there's route running, you know, there's ability to just be physical and go up and get balls and do things like that. So he would be my, like, under-the-radar Chris Sims Robin Hood guy, yeah. that's who I would take as, as far as the, nobody else is talking about or looking at. I think it's always fun to bring up the point or, or bring up the question, what fit do you like? Yeah. Where would you like to see one of these guys go? You mentioned that you still like T.Y. Hilton. I do as well. Right. So just kind of as you think about it off the top of your head, right. where would you like to see him end up? Yeah, well, T.Y. Hilton, I mean, I, I think about him and I think of the Green Bay Packers, right? Yeah. You know, a team where I'd love to see another weapon, and I don't think he's going to command huge dollars. Yeah, you'll probably have to, I don't know, 10, 12 million, maybe somewhere in there. You think that much at this probably, point? Probably, maybe nine. It, it's going to depend on how many teams get in on him. But it really, for a, a solid, you know, really good number two, that's about what you're going to pay now. I yeah. mean, you're, I know it's the numbers we got to remember, just they keep going up, yeah. the salary cap, and I know it's a little less this year and all of that. But that is a team that would jump out You're to thinking me. Thinking about that fit with Devonte Adams, all those young guys they got in there running around, he'd, he'd be a nice addition. That, that, that's where I look at that. I mean, of course, and you know, I'm, I'm, I like Aaron Rodgers. I'd like him to get a little help there. He probably but would yes, like that as well. Th that yeah. makes a lot of sense. And you, when you talk about you know that team, the need, things like that, of course, there's uh, you know some teams out there that have tremendous amounts of money to throw out there too, you know. With, would the Raiders, would they get involved in that? You know, a lot of people think Juju Smith-Schuster and they want Nelson Aguilar. I don't know. I know he'd still fit there, too. Mm -hmm. Like a, a guy like T.Y. Hilton, you know, the thing I like, you have veteran, uh, not an extensive injury history. I know it's a little banged up, but still has enough juice to beat you deep and is still a really top-end route runner. So, yeah, that, that'll be, be interesting. He's one of those guys to, to kind of watch and, and see where this goes. And Sammy Watkins fit in really well in, in that little role there when he was healthy. You know, Kelsey and Hill leading the way, but he would show up quite a bit sometimes. When you think about him playing elsewhere without Hill and Kelsey, yeah. what do you think? Um, I think Sammy Watkins, I mean, it's, I, I think it's going to be a rude awakening for him in free agency. Like He would be one of those guys where it's like, you know, I know Pete put some phrases on here like fool's gold or yeah. something like that. He'd be the one that everyone's going to get real excited about. What well, we got? Sammy Watkins, right? And I'd go, whoa, okay, yeah, you might get six games in two years out yeah, of him. Yeah. That to me would be, you know, Will Fuller the same thing. Will Fuller, a guy from the Houston Texans, you know, all right, PED use, constant injury. You're going to look at the stats and some of the plays and go, I like this kid. I do that. But to me, that's a real, real risky signing. He's pretty limited. Yeah, yes, I, that would scare me to death. A little bit of wide receiver news that uh, Pete just fed me in my ear. Saints just released Emmanuel Sanders. Oh, that's not shocking. They have a lot of fat to trim there. I mean, they're in the worst salary cap position I've ever seen. He can a real, still play a little bit. He could still play, but he's not worth maybe the price tag you know, they paid him last year. It's still being able to play. But I look at Emmanuel Sanders now, and I don't. I think we're at the point of this career, you know, one, it's been a long career. You know, from what I know, it's a little bit of like, hey, we got to manage the body so he can play. He's 34. On Sunday. That's what I mean. And that's, it's a little bit like, hey, we can't really practice him all week. We got to just let him play on Sunday. It's one of those guys. Mm. And you know, he's being paid number two receiver money, and I don't think he's a number two anymore. He'd be a, 
oh, he's a great number three. Oh, our number two got hurt. Okay, we can use him as our number two guy for a few weeks here while that guy gets healthy or something like that. Well, I think on the offensive side of the ball, this is the biggest list of significant names or recognizable names. Yeah. Before we move on, are, is there anybody that you haven't hit on before well, we go to running backs? You know, I mean, hey, I, I do love Corey Davis. It's a little bit of a – this last year was the first year of real, like, marquee type play mm -hmm. but he is an elite route route runner you love him to be a, a two a I, one? yeah a number two really but it's a high-end two okay. it is I mean that that's where I look at that I, I like him you know definitely AJ Green I'm interested in just because I still think there's ability there I listen I was wrong I put him in the top 10 receivers last year Things I know got that quiet in I was hurry wrong it him. got quiet in a hurry and last year there were some drop balls and it just didn't really click with Joe Burrow and then Burrow got hurt but he's one of those guys I think if you go to the right spot you could see a little resurgence of his career but the guy like I told you I love Juju I understand we know I don't want to talk about him too much the guy I'm really excited about is Curtis Samuel like to me when I look at him and I just go man Jets. Yeah. Right. Jets, you want to run the Shanahan system? All right, who's going to be your Debo Samuel? Oh, Curtis Samuel. Oh, fake toss. Toss it to him around going the other Tyree way. Kill. Yeah, exactly. He can be Ish. that guy. Right. Yeah. He's exactly. He's a weapon. He's more than you could put him a tailback and let him run toss sweep. So I look at the Jets, and again, I'll throw the Packers out there with Curtis Samuel. And then of course, Washington. Washington has the ability to run that type of offense. It, you know, Norv Turner, his son, and everything, they were there in Carolina with Curtis Samuel, so they know what they bring, and they need another guy. They only got Terry McLaurin, so he's the one I look at that could be everyone's going to go, what? We paid Curtis Samuel this much money? Hmm. And I'm going to be the one to go, yes, yes he's, he's worth that much money. He's truly, you know, a game breaker that way. Former first round pick, right? I know he's a second round he's a pick. He's a second rounder, okay. But four the three pick. out yeah. of Ohio State. Big time traits. From Brooklyn here, uh, New York. A guy I've known about a long you know, a long time. And and yeah, he was dangerous at Ohio State. He really yeah. was. So yep, that's okay. a, that's it for receiver. Okay. Yeah. Running backs. And just like at receiver, we had kind of Kenny Galladay mm -hmm. to bat lead off and begin there. I think that person at this position is Aaron Jones. Agreed. The Packers. So let's begin with whether you think he should stay or will stay with Green Bay and they should pay him or if his future is elsewhere? Well, how much, you know, first off, I thought there was a chance. And we, I, still, I don't think we still know the true franchise dollars. Do we, Pete? Is it $11 million the is what back? they're reporting right now? But I don't think we know officially what that number is. Yeah, I thought there would be a chance that they would franchise him, try to ride him out one more year. Yeah. Let's, say it, let's say it's $12 million. Yeah. Is he worth that? $12, $12 million year? franchise? I know what I'd it say. It would make me think one year, maybe, but really he's not. On a year-to-year -year basis, I would say no. But think I about this one year. I know. The one year is what changes it, and you're in a window with, with Rodgers and all of those type of things. That's what makes it an interesting conversation. You know, the Packers themselves, they got some work to do. You know, as far as getting, you know, getting over the salary cap, too. They're in a little bit of a tough spot there altogether. So, yeah, I thought there might be a chance. I did. Um, I was a little surprised. But, but I understand it, too, from this standpoint. You know, when you look at running backs and you get into average salaries per year and all of those, hey, listen, this, this to me, this guy is not a top five running back in the NFL. That's the, that's the first thing I'm going to say right off the bat. I've got a yeah but there, but okay. he's a quality running back for a team that really needs one. Yes, I know. For an that's, offense that's working pretty well. That's where they got to balance it. And, and it's 8.7. Is that right, Pete? 8.7 million? That's what they're saying? Yeah. That, that to me is where I just, then if it was 8.7, I would have said yes. Mm -hmm. I don't understand why not. Yeah. You know, we kind of hit on this, I think, two pods ago. You know, there's not a lot of game breakers on that offense. Right. You know, he was the one guy where, ooh, there's a crack or, ooh, there's a screen pass, and he could take it up 70 yards up the sideline. You know, other than Valdez scaling, there's really nobody that scares you that way. No. So I am surprised by that. You know, I, I don't know what their logic is in that. I, you know, are the negatives about Aaron Jones? Is he always going to get tough yards? And when there's not a lot there to be had, is he going to plow it up in there and get you five? No, he's not. And I, you know, to me, I'm just I'm putting myself in their shoes a little bit. They're probably looking at it too, going, "Well, damn, he gets to run against a lot of good looks, and we got a great offensive line, and everybody's worried about stopping Rodgers in the pass game. So it's the perfect environment for him to succeed that way too." So that's where I, I at least toss it out. But he is the 
the big guy out there. I just don't know. What's who, he worth out there? That's what I mean. That's To me, he's not like in the Joe Mixon, Derrick Henry, Dalvin Cook, Alvin Kamara, Christian McCaffrey conversation. Those are guys that are all $12 million and north per year. I don't think he's that quality of football player. Now, that next group of guys, yes. When you get to the Kareem Hunts, you know, Saquon Barkley, uh, I do think he's better than Melvin Gordon at this point of his career. You know, if you can find a way to sign him up for eight, nine million a year, you know, then yeah, take it all the way. But I, I'd have a hard time throwing out 12 million per year for a guy That's like fair. Aaron Jones. Yeah. Let's take a look at the Aaron Jones, uh, the, the odds for his next team provided by Oh, Bet. oh. Miami leading the way. I, I, I mean, they, they're, they're, that has been out there. They need something like that, you know, as far as a legit game-breaking running back, good in the pass game, do those type of things. I mean, especially if they have two at quarterback, I think they're going to have to play a certain way to make that work as well. The 49ers are the team I continue. I, I'd go, they would, I'm sure they would love Aaron Jones. I mean, he's their kind of guy. Shanahan's going to go, wait, nobody can create holes better than me. And this guy, if you give him a hole, mm -hmm. he can, he's got a rocket up his ass and he can go with it. And then the other team that I'll, you know, I think really these top five teams. San are, Francisco's second. San, San Francisco, that's what I mean. It's realistic with Shanahan. Yeah. But then, you know, we hit Green Bay. Arizona was a team I wrote down for him as well. That does make sense. I mean, again, it's a wide open field. It's Kyler Murray, mm. and you got to worry about him in space. He's a space running back. That's what he is. And lastly, the New York Jets. That would be the other one I'd look at. The Jets have a ton of money, and you're running the Shanahan running system. It's a great one. So he's going to know the terminology because Mike LaFleur, Matt LaFleur, he's going to have similarities there. You know, chances are they might draft a quarterback at two, or at least I think they should, and we'll mm -hmm. see where that goes. Uh, to me, that would make sense, too, to, to jump that, you know, get that going in the, in the right direction. Zach Wilson just called it and said, yeah, go ahead and get that done. Yeah, me. go. I mean, when, I, like I, look to hand the, the ball next when I look at the Jets, you know, we've already hit two guys where I go, they got a lot of money. I mean, if I remember here, they're third in salary cap. They got $72 million in space right now, right? They're second. By, they're all basically at $72 million. The Jaguars, the Patriots. I look at the Jets and go, we've mentioned two guys already where I just go, Curtis Samuel and Aaron Jones, I would go, ooh, and we get him with Zach Wilson, mm. ooh, watch out, we could, have, we could be explosive. That, that would be a cool combination. But I, I could certainly see any of those teams that we just saw there, that top five uh, for Aaron Jones. In addition to the salary cap spot they're in, which is good, two first-round picks this year, three next year, they, they are in as good a shape as anybody, not in terms of roster, but – a chance Money, to build it and picks, go the right yeah, way. Yeah, they're in time. a real, real power spot, no doubt. Joe Douglas. Okay, yeah. so that's Aaron Jones, the top running back. Who counts for you as the best of the rest? Yeah, I mean, I think Marlon Mack is the guy you got to look at a little bit there. You know, he was injured last year, but he's still a talented running back who can do it all, can run with a little power. And I'm not going to say he's a game breaker, but – uh, uh, he's still a, got big playability where he can rip off 30 and 40 yard runs. So I, I'm going to throw him out there as one guy that I think there's going to be a little bit more demand for him than maybe people realize, you know, and then I look at Chris Carson, Leonard Fournette, you know, Kenyon Drake, who I'm not as high on maybe as you know, the rest of the world is, but I really look at Chris Carson and Leonard Fournette to be guys to watch out for. I still think there's mileage on Leonard Fournette's yeah. tires. You know, Chris Carson, it's a physical brand of football. I don't, you know, I don't know if he's going to be the same guy four years from now, mm -hmm. but for the next two years. And when I look at those guys too, and I just go, hey, Pittsburgh Steelers, you want some attitude at running back? Yeah. You want to get back into like smash mouth and, you know, helping Big Ben with the running game? To me, those are two guys that will assert their attitude on the football team. The old line will be like, well, this guy, he'll yeah. kill people if we just give him a hole. He'll run through a wall. And, and that, that's a match that I look at that could be very sexy and cool. I'm glad you bundled those two together because yeah. they're kind of similar. Right. I'm going to make you pick one. You only get to go after one and sign him. I would probably go Chris Carson. I probably would, yeah. Um, I think he's been more consistent the yes, last few years. Yeah, I, 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 Fournette, yeah, there's a few more question marks Fournette's altogether. intriguing. H how intrigued are you by the way he finished last oh, year? Oh, well, I, you know, I was a huge, Pete, I'll tell you, before the start of the year when Jaguars released him. I mean, I took a lot of crap on social media because I was right, like, yeah, Fournette's still got something. He's not a guy you just, like, say, hell, it's over. It's, 
he's he's got some starting caliber traits. You know, I think the end of the year will give him a boost. The fact that he didn't get crushed into the ground last year and didn't play a, a lot of snaps, I think that helps him out. You know, he is. He's, he's intriguing. Uh, I think Carson, yeah, maybe is a little bit more reliable and dependable to me at this point. Um, but but I'm, I am a fan of, of Leonard Fournette. And considering how much Brady yeah. and that offense leaned on Fournette there in the postseason, right. I, I don't have the numbers memorized anymore, but I think he was in double digits for touches with runs and catches easily into the double digits in the entire postseason. I, Shouldn't he be worth quite a bit to them? Yes, I would to think. To keep around? Yes, I would think so. They probably are also looking at it, though, going, we drafted our first round running back two years ago. We got to start playing Rashad Penny. We got to, what the, what, you know, and I know he's been hurt. Ronald Jones? Uh, and, well, no, Rashad Penny, the kid they got from San Diego State like two drafts ago, or it's probably three drafts. Seattle. San Diego State. Right, but uh, didn't he get picked by Seattle? Yes, yeah. Seattle. Well, what team did you say? I thought. I'm talking about Tampa Bay. Oh, yeah. Tampa talk, Bay? Yeah, we're on different pages. Yeah, well. We're talking about Tampa Bay. And no, if they, if they if got they Ronald Jones, and there's no way. No, I don't think that Fournette's going to go back there, especially if he's commanding, like, you know, or he wants, you know, a pretty little penny. Yeah. They got enough things they got to go, and Ronald Jones is in the prime of his career, explosive. You know, he's a true guy. So, sorry, I thought you were That's talking right. about Seattle and Chris Carson. I thought Carson you said there, Penny bad. just to get a dig at me. Like, no. <laughs> pay attention. No, no, no. <laughs> but, um, no, I don't think – I don't expect Fournette to be back with them. You know, Chris Carson of the Steelers, Fournette to the Steelers, you know, Aaron Jones to the teams we mentioned. You know, we talked about Marlon Mack, one team that I look at and go, wait, 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 the Atlanta Falcons? They got nothing at running back. Mm -hmm. They've got an Arthur Smith, right, who's – who's going to base their offense around the run game. And I'm sure they'll draft somebody, but that's where I look at, like, Marlon Mack, too, where I go, oh, Marlon Mack, you know, to the, to the Atlanta Falcons, that, that makes sense to me. They need something there to, so Arthur Smith can run his play-action pass and, you know, uh, and uh, uh, Matt Ryan can, can make some plays off of that. The other one I'm just interested in general, just before we move on, you know, I, I want to see what – well, what's what? what are, where are the Broncos going to tender Philip Lindsay at? Mm. That is one I'm just a little intrigued by, because what do you think they should? He's do? a restricted free agent, and you know if they they, they better high tender him. I, I I would think they'd have to. I mean, he'd be one of those guys where I just think when people turn on film, they're going to go, holy shit! Like that's these are some unbelievable runs. He's unbelievable in the pass game. He's explosive as hell. Uh, and, I, you know, I don't know what they do there, but he's one of those restricted free agents I kind of got my eye on, too. Tight ends. Not a lot of names here. Yeah. We talked a couple weeks ago, maybe last week, Hunter Henry yep. with the Chargers, Johnny right. Smith with the Titans. We thought one of those two, at least one, yeah. would be franchised. Doesn't look like either one of them is going to be. Who do you think will command the most attention out yeah. there? Yeah, and what did I – I thought – did I say both of them I thought maybe would be franchised? We wouldn't have been – yeah, I, I did. I think we wouldn't have been surprised with, with either. Yeah, I, you know, Jonu is more talented to me. And here's where I'd probably drop the ball there is just that you know, they got good tight ends there. You know, I, they're probably looking at trying to re-sign a Corey Davis. So they, they got a lot of defensive issues in general. So I, I can understand why, okay, we cut ties with Jonu Smith. It, it makes sense. It does. You know, with the Hunter Henry thing, if you remember that, I just thought – Hey, you got a guy from the Saints as your new offensive coordinator. They love the tight end and what he can do in the pass game and all of that. And, and not that they're super talented at tight end. They have a need there, but they're probably also looking at it going, wait, we paid Keenan Allen a ton of money. We got Mike Williams, who I think Mike Williams is a phenomenal football player. He's going to be coming up soon. They're probably looking at, hey, we got to pay him and do that. We got to fix the offensive line. There's a lot of issues in that unit. Uh, so that's probably where he fell by the wayside. So, yeah, I, I would say uh, surprise, but the more you think about it, the logic, I, I understand what both of those teams did. What do you think the next step is for Gronk? Gronk, I would be shocked if it's not Tampa Bay. And then, to me, the only other places are going to be, I, I just kind of look at, like, common people he might know. All right, I don't think he's going back to New England. Right. All right, that's not happening. The Miami Dolphins... Did he, does he want to go down to Miami with Brian Flores? His old tight end coach, George Gotzi's there. 
you know, as one of the quarterback co-offensive coordinator guys, that'd be the only team I could see maybe that happens. Brady's got his building his house in Miami. He'll go, oh, well, I'll live by Brady the rest of my life and just move <laughs> down there and get it going. I mean, that, that's the only one that kind of jumps back to me, but I expect it to be back in Tampa. Jared Cook, Gerald Everett, any interest in either one of those yeah, two? Yeah, I mean, Jared Cook, you know, he's getting up there in age. Uh, still a solid player, not a superstar. Jared, El Jer Gerald Everett does have some real talent. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt about that. And I think those, that, like, Gerald Everett can be one of those guys where signs for a little bit more money on the free agent market than, than people might realize. Offensive lineman, yeah. final position here offensively. Which one of these guys most set or has the most potential, you think, to, to break the bank, as they say, this well, time of year? Yeah, it, th there's some good ones. You know, you know, you got Joe Thune out there. You got Trent Williams, you know, Corey Lindsley, Alex Mack, you those kind of too players. Fired up about any of them. I, Trent Williams is the one to me that's going to break the bank. You know, I don't know if the 49ers can figure out how to sign him or not. Trent Williams, you know, he, Chris Sims all pro team. He's the best. I, if you made me one, one guy, I'm taking Trent Williams at left tackle in all of football right now. There's just no weakness. He's so, great in the run game. He's awesome at pass protection. So he's worth how much then, you think? God, I mean, if Laramie Tunzel's making $22 million a year, he's right there with it. He's a better run blocker than Laramie Tunzel for sure. Pass blocking, it's close. Tunzel's a pretty gifted pass blocker. But, you know, the run blocking to me is what makes him greater. And the pass blocking, okay, maybe he's a hair less or it's right there. You know, year two after a year off, I bet you it's not a hair less. I bet you his pass blocking is going to be as good as anybody in football. So, so how come the 49ers are willing to, to let the top guy to position go? Well, I don't think they're – they just – I think they got some things they got to figure out. And, you know, Trent Williams basically forced his way to San Francisco this mm -hmm. year. I would think Kyle Shanahan, the Shanahan family, drafted him in Washington. I would think they probably still have the inside track – of getting a long-term deal done. They're like, hey, he likes us. We, he knows we like him and all that. And he'll favor us a little bit as long as we can make it close yeah. or something like that. That would be my two cents. I have no inside information. Listen, for everybody out there that thinks I know, like, like, like my, my relationship with Kyle would be over if I was saying these right. things and he had told me. We're not friends anymore. So I don't know these things. We don't talk about mm -hmm. this shit. And we don't talk a whole lot this time of the year anyways because he doesn't want to say something right. to me that I might blurt out accidentally and all that. But right. Trent Williams is the guy I look at. And then after that is Corey Lindsley. Corey Lindsley is the other guy where – you know, it's just he's he's the best center in football, and you know it it there's a notch I think between him and the rest right now. And because of that, don't don't you think that the Packers probably still think there's a chance to keep him? I would think, but you know they do have a pretty damn good O line. How much money can you spend on that O line? You you you're gonna have the highest paid left tackle in football and yeah. the highest paid center in football. Yeah. That's where you start to look at it and go, okay. And do they want to sign a receiver and get back Aaron Jones? You know, how many things can they possibly do there? So that's probably why I don't expect to see Corey Lindsley back there. They're one of those teams that you just, they got an eye for offensive linemen. So they probably got either somebody coming up the ranks or they're just confident in their ability to draft somebody to get that done and fill that spot. There's some tackles here with a lot of experience, a yeah. lot of years, and a lot of really good years behind right. them. I'd love to hear which one you would want the most, Daryl Williams, Alejandro Villanueva. Yeah. A lot for the Steelers. Russell Okung, former first-round pick. Rick Wagner, I feel like he's been starting forever. Though. I know, I know. He's uh, been in a few places. I, I think the first guy there, like, Williams, Daryl Williams is the guy, like, you know, Robin Hood, where people are going to go, what? We gave this kind of money to this guy? You know, he's got all the attributes of a special right tackle. He played really good football last year. I think people are going to turn on that film and his size and his athleticism, the length of his arms. He's going to be the guy, I think, that surprises people when they go, Wait, I don't know much about this guy. You know, he went from Carolina to Buffalo, and, you know, how good is he and all of that? I think he's pretty damn legit. He's the one I'd look at to go, like, that's the Robin Hood going to just, you know, we take from the rich and give to the poor. Nobody knows about him. I'd say watch out him from him. The one I would be careful about is the other guy you talked about. You know, I like Russell Okung, but mm -hmm. Alejandro Villanueva would scare me at this point of his career. Mm. The, the play is slipping to me. You know, he's not very good in the run game. In the past game, it's good, but it's not great. I don't sit there and go, oh, man, this is the same guy we watched five years ago. Game, the game hasn't really, you know, slipped by him or anything. So that He'll would be 33 this fall. Yeah, too. That, that, would, that would scare me. You know, there's just too many plays where he's a really tall guy and 
his inability to anchor into the ground, I think, is what bothers me at times. He could get pushed back into the quarterback, and he can't get low pads to dig people out in the running game. And I think that's what bothers me. One other name I'll throw before – or go, go ahead. Did you want to ask one more thing no, there? I, I was just going to say, and this may be what you were thinking, I, I, I like the, the kind of hoisting of a red flag saying yeah. – Buyer beware. Yeah, but that's the one. That's a buyer beware because everyone's going to know the name and go, oh, that's awesome. Like Nate Solder from the the. Good point. It's going to be the same. Oh, that's awesome. I was we got ask him. If there was if there was somebody else in that category. Well, um, you know, I guess in that category, I don't think so. You know, I don't look the, look at it that. You know, Rick Wagner, to me, is you know. A low end starting right tackle. He's like that guy where you go, oh, we we you know we can't find the right guy. Hey, Rick's out there. Okay, yeah. let's let's sign him. We'll give him some decent money, mm -hmm. and he can he can hold it down for the year or something like that. Um, the guy that I'll say, you know, Alex Mack still has value. That's another guy I'll just throw out there to go. Alex Mack, when he's healthy, he still you know can kick some ass. Um, so and at this point of his career, he's already made money. We'll see where that goes. You think he's a, uh, just looking at centers better than Lindsley? No, he's not better than Lindsley. Lindsley is clearly the best center in football. Right. Uh, uh, for no, no doubt for me. Um, you know, and then the guy we haven't hit on is Joe Thune, right? That's the one guy out there. And, you know, Pete gave me some questions and things like, you know, just like what's the best fit for a guy like Joe Thune or some of these offensive linemen? Hey, listen, I'd love to see Trent Williams, you know, back, back with the 49ers. We know that. But, like, the Bengals, like, Please, like, get some interior offensive line help. I mean, maybe you, if you're the Bengals, you sign Daryl Williams at right tackle and Joe Thune. There you go. Let's start protecting. Yeah. What, what's the point of paying Joe Mixon if you can't ever open up a fucking hole for him? So, yes, that would be one I'd look at. And they really need the interior line help and right tackle help to where that would make sense. That's offense. And I, I hear there's a guest. Oh, there's a guest. You heard there's a guest? I heard. Big Phil. What do we got, Paul? Christopher, good to talk good to you guys doing? today. Yeah. And yes, I'm I'm the best kind of guest to have on because I come free. <laughs> you are. That's right. You do come free. Yeah. yeah. In I'm, fact, you come. Right. You, you come. You're you're a nice father, so you actually come paying me probably more than anything. You know, dad's <laughs> nice. So this is you're we really benefit from, you, from your relationship. We, yeah. Hey, Christopher, can I come on your show tomorrow? I'll give you five hundred dollars for ten minutes. Sure, uh, yeah. sold. Yep, yep. Just yeah, gotta be it. cash though, okay, Dad? Just cash. Uh, hey, listen, brother, that's what I deal in. <laughs> hey, Dad, just so you probably didn't know this, but this guy sitting here to the right of me is fifty years old today. Is he really? Fifty that, years Phil? today. That's right. Oh, I knew it was coming, yeah. Mr. 50 years old. You know, 50 is nothing. Thank you. Uh, it, I, I like nice that when you still feel like, oh, okay, this is that and all that. But I will say, which I've told my son, I went from 64 to 65 this past offseason, and I said, it was like overnight I go, I, man, this is real. This age <laughs> thing is real. <laughs> it's, every time, like, uh, let's see, what is today? So. I was on the things Wednesday. Monday, I went out and was with my son, Matt. We threw with some kids and all that. And I came home, and my legs were shot from standing on that turf. Yeah. And, of course, being a dummy and demonstrating. Ugh. You know, so it, ju it just crushed me. I'm sorry, this phone. Yeah, damn phone. Probably his other son. You're good. Yeah, yeah, somebody else wants to do a podcast or call me. <laughs> uh, but, Phil, sometimes. You know, just sometime use me. That's summer. what they do. But it's all good. I heard you talking about Joe Thune from the Patriots, where he goes. Oh, yes, the Bengals. Yes. Let's don't draft the number one pick in the draft <laughs> and have a, arguably one of the top running backs in the NFL right. and Joe Mixon. But, no, let's don't do it. Let's keep just randomly picking people here and there. And, you know, I, I kind of believe this theory a little bit in the NFL. Just who are you? The Bengals want to be – an offensive team, or that, you know, that's what I look at right, right now. Right, right. So, man, get one side done. Yeah, that's right. You know, let's don't have a, two holes on offense and two holes on defense. Just get one side done and try to win the game, you know, that way. As Nick Saban said, I never, you know, he was really funny before the playoffs. Well, you know, college football's changed. you got to score. And you just hope you stop the other team a couple times. Right. And, you know, some teams are kind of in that mode in the NFL, and, I know that's an overstatement, but I'm just saying it because they relied on, you know, Joe Burrow so much last year, and I'm not second guessing. We've talked about this, but yep. I said it early. Yeah. Too many throws. Yeah. Too much. My God, too much. And 
And then after a while, I went, well, man, I guess he's going to do it. But he started, I saw him taking hits, this, that. And I actually saw him physically kind of slow down a little, too. Right. In, in many ways. Yeah, so, it was too much, too much. And, you're, Dad, I think your point's spot on. Like, have one unit on your team that's complete right. to fall on. Don't have a little, like, you know, oh, we got a little issue here on both sides of the ball, and then we can never really depend on one side to, to do something late in the game to get us through to get the wind or do that. And, well, I'll uh, give you a good example. Yeah, Hill. You know, you, you look at the Raiders. Hey, they fixed their offense. I mean, it, it's fixed. And, my gosh, if the defense just mm. could have, like, put 11 guys on the field, they should have been in the playoffs. Right. right. But, but they couldn't even do that. Having leads in last seconds and, oh, we're going to win. And, oh, my God, Miami goes all those yards in 10 seconds or what? You know, <laughs> I, I mean, I think three games they lost late on the last drive of the game. Right. I know the Chiefs. The Dolphins, and I'm forgetting the other one, but you you look at that, and I think I even heard you talk about this, Christopher. Is it, it, that, it, it, of course, that changes our perception of the Raiders, their season, their yeah. team, and all that. It's a, it's so it's amazing how close it was for them, but they did fix one side of the ball big time. Yeah, yeah. no doubt. And listen, just to the Bengals thing, because yeah. Pete, you know, he gets in my ear. He goes, "Hey, they have drafted some offensive linemen in the first round." You know, Jordan, Jonah Williams. I get that. I, I, I know. I'm not, I'm not trying to but, – but still, with what they've got, they've put a very little resource, you know, resources in to the other three possession, positions on there, too. Right. And it's an underwhelming group. And, then, yeah, Jonah, you know, you know what? Listen, Jonah Williams yeah. was hurt that first year. So, last year was his right. first, guy, first year of getting back in the swing of things. And, you know, to Dad's point, if you're not that quarterback and that running back, you know, you've got you to you you have a complete all-line in front of you. Well, well they, they, they have been drafting linemen, and I can't remember the year they drafted one and two. Oh, yeah, they uh, drafted the Oregon kid who didn't work and out. And the A&M kid. Right, and he didn't work out either. Is that Obwe Obwehe, Obwehe and Fisher? Yes, Obwehe, yes. I, and I looked at them, and I remember going to practice the year they were drafted, and I went. I, I was, uh, Marvin Lewis was the greatest guy besides maybe Belichick. He'd stand there and talk to you the whole practice right. sometimes and tell you about and I just go, wow, man, looks like you might be set for a while here at tackle. He goes, well, I hope so, but there, it's such an adjustment from the way they played to the NFL. And he was not negative, but he was like, you know, I said, oh, okay. I, I could see the concern. Yeah. Because uh, Fisher, you know, played in the, oh, let's just hurry up. The offense, Chip Kelly, about anything. right, right. We just yeah. we run two plays the whole game. And then away he was in a wide open, a wide open play, Johnny Manziel style at that time, too, where right. it was like one run play and one pass protection. So you, you're well, right. Well, you know, that, I think that whole A&M line and group and Mike Evans was there or whatever. This, yeah, and that holy was, crap. <laughs> that was Pretty an good. NFL damn football team it was but let's draft johnny menzel in the first round and then everybody on tv he should be the first pick and be <laughs> first pick of the draft if you don't take him the first pick then you should be fired and hey yeah. think of the quarterbacks let's, let's some of those yeah, yeah. Think let's of get the quarterbacks, the quarterbacks here the first Dad. pick here phil i understand that you've you've uh, watched some trevor lawrence and zach wilson i'd love to hear what you saw well you know i'm not uh, I'm, I want to wait till I would see them all and do it all i'm a little slow just other things have come up in my life but whatever but, of course, I like them both. Um, I do think they'll be the first and second picks of the draft. And I understand why you – I think Trevor Lawrence, if he fails, he'll still be really good. And I think Zach Wilson is going to be, you know, at worst, a really good, solid uh, NFL starter. So and, – and, and I did something that I used to make fun of, uh, Mike Mayock and all them. I watched every play. Well, I'm that guy. <laughs> I did it this year. Yeah. I watched every play. I, as I was doing it, I was laughing at myself. I'm such a hypocrite. Every play, which and, one? Every play. He's gotten both. He's every one. He's watched those oh, are the two. Both. He's watched and, every and, play. Oh, wow. Yeah. Not only did I do that, I, I started, you know, I get enamored all the time, and I, I'm slow as hell some days because I start looking at the scheme and judging other guys. I go, what am I doing? Come on. Hell, it's been two hours. I'm still, you know, whatever. So, But I do like them both. They're really, truly so different, and it's how do you see your offense? And I really believe this now, too, as you look at these guys and you grade them and you do that, but every team has got a different way of what they, how they want to use the quarterback a little. Right. So I, I think you have to really look at that, too. And um, But when it all comes down to it, Christopher and Paul, is you're going to have to throw the ball to win. Yep. 
So, and I think Christopher and you guys, I listened to your podcast when you went over to Christopher's list. It was really good. And when you can really run and you're dynamic, that makes your process in the NFL maybe a little easier. Maybe. You know, it gives you that out. But also, when you can really run sometimes, too, it slows the process of learning to throw from the pocket where all the plays, a lot of plays are made. And you don't have to run a 4-5 to be mobile in the NFL. Please, everybody, right. shut up about that. <laughs> I mean, I see guys that can't run that are mobile and move out of the pocket. Yeah, and right. all we got – the game is spread out. It's easier than ever to get a move in the pocket, get outside, step up, all that. And we know defensive linemen, uh, their discipline is very limited, and it's, it's just easier. And, just, and, and, again, because of the spread offenses, all the quick throws, everything we're doing, it, it, it makes it easier. So you don't have to be, oh, he's just not athletic enough to draft. Who's that? What guy are we talking about? And I think Christopher said it. It's like we hold Mac Jones to a different standard. Yeah, oh, right. he played with great players. Right. Yeah. Well, what did Trevor Lawrence play with? <laughs> What's Justin Fields playing with? Right. I mean, so that's a, it's a, that that argument is stupid. Well, and then you know, but, I'll say this: when Dad got done watching Zach Wilson, because you know, this, it's he, it's a pet peeve of ours. That right there, it's always that. And I, you know, again, it's oh, Zach Wilson with the BYU, the talent, or whatever. Okay, well, the oh, other yeah, guys, go ahead. the other guys are. I mean, they're throwing to people that are more open on a consistent basis than Zach Wilson is. <laughs> right. They they know there's there's more room for error. Oh, damn! I missed that guy for six yards. Uh, so what? The next play, my other freak will be open, and I'll hit him, or I'll give a draw play to the running back, and he'll rip off 30 yards. So there is no pressure on them that way too. People right. don't realize that. And then I'll just say this, Dad. I hope you don't mind me saying this, but Dad, when he got done watching Zach Wilson, goes, I, I didn't see many games where I just thought BYU was clearly the better team on the field. Yeah. He just goes, it, it wasn't. He goes, they're not better than Coastal Carolina. And that's what I've tried yeah. to argue with a few people on radio, too. You know, just, just because you know BYU and you don't know Coastal Carolina doesn't mean they're better than them. You know, it, it does not. Uh, and it didn't, like, it wasn't I watched BYU games. Yeah, there's a few games on there against, you know, the East, West, Southwest, North Carolina, Southwest, Louisiana teams where you go, yeah, they're better, great. But, you know, the rest of the teams on there, I wasn't going, well, they're just outclassing this team. It's not even close. And that's not, it's not a fair assessment of the situation, in my opinion. Oh, listen, listen. He had to move more than them to create uh, throwing lanes, stuff right. like that. So I'm not going to get into this. I'm not going to say. Yeah, he's going to do his own to, thing. Because you know that. Yeah, but but I'm just saying this. Yes, when they lined up, they lined up against UT San Antonio. Right. And that game is being played. I'm going. I don't. I'm looking at it, going. Hey, UT San Antonio might be better than BYU. <laughs> right. And I'm, I'm being dead serious. I, now, I think San Antonio had a good year. I think, I, if I remember, I didn't look at their schedule because you know I'm not going to judge anybody from their team. But I think they actually had a pretty good year this this past year. But yeah, they had a lot of good looking guys. They made him move. BYU, hey, the great passing game is great stats and all that. Let me tell you what. Can we pick up one blitz, just one? <laughs> yeah. Every time teams blitzed him, it was a free runner. He either threw it off his back foot, which was a great training lesson, Paul, for being in the NFL. Mm. And, I mean, free guys flying. He just would stand there, throw it, anticipate whatever. He made some great throws, got away with some interceptions too, things like that. But it wasn't like BYU was just stuffing him at the line of scrimmage and he had all day to throw either. Yeah. Right. But, again, to, to switch it real quick, Trevor Lawrence, the size, the ability just to let it go. He throws with a lot of freedom. I mean, it's like, you know, he's not, I'm, I'm going to hit it, and he lets it go. Right. He never kind of guides the ball. I love that about him. He's going to play tall, which we saw, yes, that's a big deal. Christopher, you say, and Paul, I heard y'all, size is a talent. Yeah. You know, it can be, and he uses that talent. So all the dump passes and short passes, you know, he threw over the top of the defense a lot and kind of stuck it in there. I was right. really impressed with that. Right. And, you know, yeah, he. the other thing he did that was really good, not to get in, I don't want to judge these quarterbacks yet because I want to finish it, but I thought he was a better back shoulder thrower. I mean, he made a lot of back shoulder throws. He yeah. seemed to like them. Cover my guy so I can just throw it as hard as I can right, right at him, right. and my guy will turn and make the catch. Did you notice that too? No doubt about it. You know, it's, it's yeah. something we talked about a little on the phone. You know, a little lot. The thing you love about Trevor Lawrence too, as much as it's a college offense, and okay, yeah, there's some guys screaming free, wide open a lot. It's a lot of 
outside the numbers. I don't care that he's open. This is still a pretty damn big time throw. And yeah. not every guy in the NFL can just hit these like as consistently as he can. Mm-hmm. And that's what he can bring to the table, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah, him and Zach Wilson, because listen, oh, Zach a Wilson, lot of NFL comebacks. teams don't like to throw outside the numbers. No, I know. Right. I know. Zach Wilson oh, is laser beams. Oh, my God, that scares beams. me. They could intercept right. the ball. And, you know, right. It, it, but, boy, does BYU and Clemson, you're right, they were not afraid to throw to the sidelines. So right. that kind of t- – and th- just going back to Zach Wilson, many, many throws from right hash with a five- or six-step, seven-step drop. Right. Throwing all the way to the left sideline mm-hmm. and putting no effort into it and really hitting a lot of people. So, yeah. you know, it. Can I name some things I didn't like about him? Yes, there, there's. I, I tell you on the phone, Christopher. I'm not going to get into it now because yeah. it's just too. It's too much, Paul. You would. It's just too much quarterbacking. And <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? I yeah, they it. both yeah. got their issues, but none right. of them are concerning enough to go. Oh no, not they're both enough the, no. to me. They're you know both worthy right. of the number one pick. Right. You know, I like Wilson more than Lawrence. I don't know who Dad likes more than the other, and he'll do that. He might do his own later, show yeah. or whatever else, anything yeah. like that. Um, but either way, they're both worthy of the number one and number two pick, is what you're saying, Dad. Phil, oh, I absolutely. Saw, yeah. th- Phil, yeah. I, I saw Trevor Lawrence play two years ago. He was a true freshman against Notre Dame, and a couple things really stood out to me. I wonder if you saw similar kind of stuff when you watched him. He threw on a on a, a last minute drive in the first half about a 22 to 25 yard in route that had the kind of pace on it that most people throw a 15 yard in route had. Number one. And number right. two, Notre Dame had a, a, a certain player, very good player, got, got banged up, couldn't yeah. play. Right. The backup that came in was a significant drop-off yeah. in terms of talent. And Lawrence knew right away exactly how to play with that, exactly where to go with the ball. Yeah, through the he deep goal route on the right sideline in the back of the end zone. Multiple times kind right. of took advantage of it. His awareness, along with his ability, both seemed pretty high level. Well, look, he's been a star his whole life. <clears throat> I mean – he was in high school, all that, and I'm sure he just didn't all of a sudden grow into this guy. He probably in the fifth grade, he's out there, and everybody's going, "Well, who? Right. This isn't fair." I'm, I'm, I'm sure he's been like that his whole life. Right. So he's he's used to playing with with the focus on him and all that. Doesn't seem to phase him. Win or lose, he's got a great demeanor on the field. He it does. Never goes mm-hmm. too high or too low. That's well, for sure. Right. So you know that, that that's you know that that says a lot too. And then I. I Zach Wilson, is he a late bloomer? I don't know about that, but I understand that, you know, his junior year, getting hurt, all this fight for the job or whatever it is. And But he did that, and I, I don't really <laughs> – I'm not going to go back and watch their high school films. Oh, you know, in high school he didn't play that. I love this. Well, <laughs> that stupid argument, too, that we let's go back and watch his – Yeah, I, I, I'm I agree. I think people put – exactly. People put too much stock into freshman, sophomore year and all that. I mean, I'm not even – I can speak from my own experience. My father can tell you. I wasn't the same human my freshman year at Texas as compared to my junior year. Right. I'm not even the same human. Yeah. And no, and no, no capacity, physically, mentally, anything. I hear that too much from some of my friends. Well, I went back in freshman year in game four. I'm going to go, well, great. You just fucking wasted your time. I don't right. know what to tell you. Right. He's not that guy anymore. Yeah. He's he's 20 pounds bigger. And he's stronger. He's a man. And have a bad game at that position. Well, I, yeah, I know. But it just people put too much stock into that I, I, too, at times. It, it is about last year. Okay, you want to look at a few things from the year before that. That's cool. Let's move on. Big Phil, I you will say talk this. Some, uh, the, go ahead. You know, Paul? Paul, I don't know if we did it a lot. You know, I, the people, I just will tell them one more time. You came up one day and threw with me mm-hmm. and my son, young son, Matt. Was the third guy throwing two? I can't remember. You. <laughs> it was did you. I throw? Y- yeah. Yeah. Oh, my, that must have been too. the last time I really tried to throw a football. I, 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 would, I can't believe I did that. That's yeah. being stupid. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I really mean this. Watching what I've seen so far of all the quarterbacks, they should all call me, everyone come in the draft, and pay me some money. And because none of them really know how to throw the ball on it's, the run. And, and none of them. And then sometimes they luck into great positions, but there's certain things you must do to do it on the run to the right, to the left, whatever. It's guaranteed. Mm-hmm. And, you know, all the great NFL throwers, Rodgers, Mahomes, just do the whole thing. They all do it well, but nobody knows how they're doing it, and right. they don't realize it. And I see, you know, Zach Wilson every once in a while will, I was telling he will, 
do something to the right, and I go, man, then teach yourself. Do that every time. Yeah. But they yeah. kind of they don't get in position to throw it. It's really easy, and throw it on the run should be one of the easiest things you do right. as a quarterback, especially once you get to high level college football and you go into the pros. Throwing on the run is the easiest thing there is to teach, mm -hmm. and it's easy to get good at it almost right yeah, away. Yeah, Zach Wilson would be the guy I looked at. It's, he's, it's going to be like riding a bike. There's too many throws on the film where I just right. go, holy f***ing shit, what yeah. a throw on the run to the right or the left or whatever. Yeah. Like, Dad's right, he's not a machine yet, but, you know, I, I know we talked about it. There, there's a few throws on there where I go, well, there's only a few guys in the NFL that can do that right there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. he makes yeah. some throws on the run, and he puts his foot in the ground and gets his body in the right position. Right. I mean, I can see the ball wobbling on the t uh, screen because it's spinning so hard. Right, right, right. And so th that's pretty cool. And to go back one last thing about the Clemson's offense, deep down I loved it. Sure. Because they got good players, and they just kept getting the ball to the good players. Right. And, you, you know, I, I know there's a stat if I look it up online or, you know, pro football focus or whatever, the number of screens, but – Man, do they throw a lot of screens, and wow, were they really good at it. Yeah, they were. If you get those kind I of mean, players, really that good. offense is great. You, you've made that point before. If you got those kind of players, that offense is, oh. is, is awesome. Right. It's an RPO, fake this, look out, fake the screen, hit right. the tight end delay. Oh, it runs for 30 yards. Where's everybody at? Because they got them teaching. I mean, they had a play off of it. It was really yeah. – I, I give them a lot of credit in that respect, that it was an offense that keeps the, uh, everybody involved. And it keeps the quarterback alive, too. I mean, Paul, do you remember playing quarterback on Christopher? There's nothing like throwing a screen. Oh, no. Hey, man, I, I've hit the last three balls. None of them gone past the line of scrimmage, but I'm still feeling three good. for three, and I'm feeling good. Hey, yeah. hey, and, Dad, let's hit on some free agent quarterbacks, go. all right? Let's do yeah. that. We've we got just a, you know, just some good things. Again, we're just going to hit on, yeah. on a few of these guys. And, Paul, go ahead. You can lead it off, man. Okay, so we've got Jameis Winston, Cam Newton, Mitchell Trubisky, Phil, kind of the, the, the biggest names out there. Who do you think is the most likely to, to go to a new team and have some success? Ooh, Cam Newton, Jameis Winston. You know, I think I, my first thought would be to say Jameis Winston, if he goes back to New Orleans and he can be their quarterback. Yeah, right. Uh, that would be because if he's the quarterback for the New Orleans Saints, he's going to have success. Right. And Cam Newton, the question is, where is he going to go back to New England? And if he doesn't, where is he going to go? What starting job will be available for him in the NFL? I can't right. imagine one I, with the way he played I, last I, I can't think of one. But, you know, I, it's, off the top of my head, I, just, I don't know. I don't know where that place is uh, it, right now. What do you think so about Trubisky, Phil? Trubisky, well, he's not going to be a starter. We know that. Right. But he's not going to be on the Bears. So we know that. No. He's going to be on the move for sure. But would I love to have him as a backup? Yes. Right? I mean, let's see. Big, athletic, strong Experience. arm. I mean, come on. He's got experience. That's right. Yeah. I would love to have him as a backup. That's what's, that's really buying some insurance where you won't fall apart uh -huh. completely right. because if you lose your starter. And I think that's really important. Hey, he's got to do the Jameis Winston thing. That's right. Look to a place that has a good team and a good quarterback, and you're definitely not going to threaten the starting quarterback. But if your number is called because he gets hurt, you have a chance to have great success and get your career going in the other way again. A.K.A. And, uh, the San Francisco 49ers, if they got Jimmy Garoppolo. That, to me, would be a guy exactly. where you go and fit. Yeah. Uh, the, ten oh, the Tennessee yeah. Titans, with where they are. He fits that offense and what, you know, okay, they they're, they got, a, you know, some, some quality parts of their football team. To me, he's the insurance that Dad's talking about. Those would be two yeah. teams that would jump out well, to I'll me right off the bat. One. Yeah, go ahead. But, but why not the San Francisco 49ers, whoever they get to be their quarterback? You know, you got to – he's made money. So sometimes, and like Jameis Winston, yeah, well, I don't know why he got paid minimum wage or minimum down in uh, New Orleans. I, I'm not real sure. But, yeah, it, it, you can't make it all about money. you got to think long – you know, long down the road, right. and, and ho if you do get the chance, but if you get a chance with a bad team, then we're all just going to sit there and go, well, we knew he was no good. Yeah, exactly right. right. That. Yeah, so exactly. I think, I think it's important that, uh, decisions for a lot of these quarterbacks that got a little talent that are borderline starters, and they're looking for another chance. Yeah. Think of that situation in New Orleans a couple of seasons ago, and Drew got hurt. Bridgewater came in, did a really nice job. They won all the games. I mean, Trubisky could be – I'd be thinking of him as that kind of guy. Yeah, If we definitely. have to win – he has to play four Absolutely. games. Can we go in and win three of them with him playing? No doubt. Revive your career. Maybe then you get a chance to be a starter again and like go Bridgewater. that way. There's yeah. no doubt about it. I mean, Dad, the Jameis Winston, I mean, I'm with Dad, too, with the Jameis Winston conversation. You know, to, to me, if there's no obvious, okay, there's a place to start, 
then I'm going back to be the backup at the New Orleans Saints. And yeah, maybe Sean Payton's going to let them compete against Taysom Hill or anything like that. But, you know, again, to me, that's still the perfect place to be the backup. You know, one, you got Sean yeah. Payton. Two, Taysom Hill, he, he's, he's going to get hurt. I mean, I don't, you know, I don't, I'm not wishing that or saying that. But the way but he plays. He's, he's going to take car crashes yeah. a few times every yeah, game. Yeah, he does. And we're, yeah. we saw him get hurt this year a little bit. Yeah. So that to well, me. Well, I'm not sure if Jameis Winston goes to the New Orleans Saints that he won't be the starter. I'm not convinced no. that they're going to start Taysom Hill. I, I hear you. Uh, I know. I don't know that either. You're right. Exactly right. Now, I, I don't know. Taysom Hill might, might get more plays with Jameis as the quarterback than he did with Drew Brees, but I maybe not a lot more, but that. And, of course, the, the other thing that I always say about Jameis Winston, and, you know, he has a flaw. He, listen, when he misses, he misses high. And it's, you know, it's look out. Go yeah. get ready to tackle. Right. And that's his, that's his throwing motion. It's one thing he's needed to correct and he has not done. But, um, you know, you put him – you put, and he's just so much more athletic than we realize. And I, I guess I heard you guys talking about it once maybe – when you watch his film from Tampa Bay, you just go, man, he makes a lot of big plays. Yes, he a does. A lot. And a right. lot of it's by scrambling. Right. And uh, so that, that'll bring a little something new to the New Orleans Saints offense if he does get a chance to go back there and be their starter. Do you think, all right, just because Cam, like, I expect if Cam's going to start anywhere, I, I mean, I'm with you guys. It's going to be the Patriots, yeah. right? And right. You know, I, I, I don't, we'll see what the Patriots do there. I'm just throwing this out there because I just go, what teams would realistically maybe give Cam Newton a shot, right? Okay. And the one team that I will look at, all right, and we don't know how this plays out yet. Uh, I, let me think. I'm, I swear to God I'm going to tell you what I think once you said I got the team. Go okay. Ahead. I mean, but if Seattle traded Russell, yes, yes right? Really? I Bingo. just think Pete Carroll would go, well, I'll play with this big sucker at quarterback and we'll control the clock and – you know, yes. I'm expecting him to be more the thrower I saw two years ago, and we'll play my we'll play Pete Carroll football. To me, that yes. would be the team that would go. They would kind of embrace the attitude of Cam, what he can bring, and all of that. So that's just my dark horse. If like Russell Wilson gets traded, and they can't get fair compensation back or get a quarterback back in that trade, yeah, I would I would look at Cam to be a guy that could maybe work up in Seattle. One hundred percent, and it, it didn't even take me a second. As soon as you said, I went, "Oh, it's there." Yeah. That's where I, I thought you would say that. Run the, he can run it. They can run more, you know. Right. Whatever you want to call it, zone reads. He'll keep it. Yeah. He's now the power runner too at times, which you don't always have to rely on. You know, two backs in the backfield and they're seven yards deep. Give it to the quarterback. A little deception. Run it in there, big fella. Right, and, yeah. You know, listen, you know he's got a big arm, and they got the kind of receivers where he'll rip it down the field and make some opportunities. But, yeah, I think it's a perfect fit. And Pete Carroll, like you said, oh, my gosh, he will be in heaven. Yeah, yeah he would, something. no doubt. I yeah. was at that, that game, Phil. I think you were there, too. Probably the 16th season. I think you were in the booth, and Cam with Carolina went to Seattle and just absolutely killed him. They had other good players, too, but it was, it was a one-man show. He brought him back and beat a very good Seahawks team. I know it was a while ago, but thinking about him with the Seahawks, you know Pete Carroll and John Schneider can bring that memory back and think, God, I, I know he's not what he was then, oh, but well, if yeah. he's even close, hey, and, yeah. we can win with that. Yeah, I mean, I, listen, I'm not giving up on Cam. I don't, I, you know, I don't think Dad is either. It, that was no. a really weird year last year. Let's not. It, his throwing motion looked like He's it was got some issues. He's got to get was it. Really wrong. He's always dealt with that issue. But he always has been able to get it back on track. And Dad and I, we talk about his motion a lot. So we really got it down. I mean, what he does. Yeah. Um, oh, listen, I can, I can name and write. I can just go. I'll grab this game and show you two perfect. Just this is the way you're meant to do it. It's from beautiful. last year, Phil? And, from last fall? Yes. Oh, yeah. Now, you had many times. Well, the Seattle the game last really year, he well. threw the ball unreal. He was, he was amazing in the Seattle game in week two last year. We got flipped over at the one-yard line at the end of the game. Mm -hmm. He made throws yeah. where you'd go, well, f well f that, that's unreal. Yeah. Yes, he, was, he, had, he had a lot of games where he threw the ball well, but he threw one or two bad ones, and we just focused on them. And, look, Paul, it comes down to this, you know. Um, it, it, it was just – it was him. He got himself, like Christopher says, in such a position that 
nobody could get to correct themselves and get accomplished what he was trying to do right. when you get in a certain position. And that's what happened to him. And, you know, listen, no training camp. He needed time. The COVID thing was real. Yeah. So I give him a break there. But the guy that you're talking about that went to Seattle, he's not far from that. Maybe not as fast. There's no doubt about that. But it's still big. He's still powerful. And he changes your whole football team into what they're trying to build. Right. And that is a great thing. And think about if Russell gets traded, I, I think now, as we're talking, I'll be disappointed if he's not in Seattle. Because <laughs> so, I'd want to see it. Right. Right. Yeah. Pete Carroll be over there going, oh, I love this. We got 47 runs so far today. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. There's no doubt about it. Um, Let's see. Anything else? Anybody else? Big Ben? Well, you know, go ahead. Give me your Big Ben thoughts. I don't don't think we've even talked about this personally, really. But, you know, we haven't had you on in so long. Go ahead. What what was your thought there with Pittsburgh and what you thought about Big Ben and and them re-signing him and everything? Let's give it one more try, man. That's yeah. it. You know, you don't know when the next time this will come around. And the team is aging in the key spots. Uh, you know, with Bud Dupree, I don't know what's going to happen there. What do you think? They'll, they'll, you think they'll they'll keep him? Will they, well, they didn't tag him. <laughs> no, they didn't right. tag no. him. They, you know, they, because they, they, got, they got issues. Uh, to me, the, it's, it's, he's one of the interesting ones. Uh, you know, Dad, I said it on like two podcasts ago. Maybe it was three now where I went, the ACL injury might actually help Pittsburgh to re-sign him because teams yeah. might be a little scared to throw out huge money and all that, and he might just go, you know what, I'll go back to where you know, I know I'm comfortable and I right. can have success one more year and maybe you know, strike it rich after that, whatever. I mean, I, I could see a one-year kind of here's the good money but not the money you really wanted. But you yes. got a chance to come back here, and but they got T.J. Watt on the other side. Nobody can double team you a whole lot, and then you got a chance. To, I, I could see that being a possibility. Well, you know, he was making a million more every game he played last year. He, I thought oh, he was terrific. Beast, right. I mean, Vince Williams, him, T.J. Watt. I mean, whoa, my gosh. Right. I mean, they they just they're sledgehammers, and uh, but you know, to it. And um, shoot, who am I missing? Yeah, Hayward. Cameron Hayward. Right. You know how many how many more years they have, and they play so many plays, but. I heard you talk about it. Change the offense enough. I know the offensive line's not going to be the great ones that Ben Roethlisberger played with, but change it enough. And, you know, just get rid of your ego and evolve the team around your defense more. Right. And that's mm-hmm. where the talent is. So let's let's show them off and quit worrying about throwing the ball like they did, which I'm sure they will not do this coming year. Right. I mean, it got to a point I go, oh, my God. Yeah, I mean, we just, how many short throws can you throw? Right, yeah. we just talked about running backs a little bit and, and free agency, and I just said, like, man, to me, like, Pittsburgh, like, Chris Carson's a free agent, Leonard Fournette's out there. Like, those are the kind of guys I'd want to get in there right now. Maybe you draft a guy to go along with it, but to, to, to assert that attitude you're talking about on the offense again, to go like, oh, hey, yes. we're coming downhill with sledgehammers, we're going to play through our defense. And like we've always said, and I, I think, Dad, you've heard me say this, well, why wouldn't they want to just look at, what Tampa Bay did and go smash mouth football protect it up oh it's one-on-one on on Chase Claypool he's gonna win Mm -hmm. Big Ben's can still throw it good enough to hit him anywhere on the field oh yeah and just make it simple like that yeah Yeah. and you can get the guy that was doing that Tampa did it yeah Tampa did it and you know goal that we talked the Super Bowl it was six seven eight protectors yeah right eight right everybody protect Tom Brady and really, the one time I think they did it once with eight-man protection, he should have thrown a touchdown. He missed the crosser by the third-string tight end. I forgot his name uh, coming across. If he just throws it to him, I think he's going to catch it and run in the end zone. Right. But he tried to loft it. If you remember the play, he was, it was oh, going yeah, from going, left to right. Yeah, 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 going. Yeah, I got, I got you. Yeah. I think it was Cameron. That was Brake. a two-man route. Right. And right. and and so that, but wow, it it took it took Tampa a long time to really settle into it, and then also. Tom Brady really didn't have to take any chances, never tries to force the ball against the Kansas City Chiefs, all that. So it was really a, a great game plan on both sides of the ball. But especially, I, I give the deep offense more credit for what they did and really than the defense. I, I do, just because it was well thought out, a lot of easy throws, yeah. some great throws too by Brady. The one to Gronk in the back of the end zone was maybe the best one of his whole the whole year. Yeah, uh, nice. So. And it, why not Pittsburgh? Right, man. Yeah. The Steelers—that's who they are. Right. Yeah. You know, how many? How many times do you think during the year that the guy that sits two seats over from me to my left, <laughs> you know, Bill Cower, 
Yeah. They need to run the ball more. <laughs> it's just, I mean, it's just, hey, Coach, uh, can we put that on a cue card for you so you don't forget it? <laughs> oh, he was. <laughs> it, but it, it, yeah, it was true. insane. And it that's who they are now. Right. And you're right. They need a thumper running back. Right. There's a couple out there. Hey, you the man, Dad. Feel good to talk to you. Okay, well, Paul, I'm glad you know the Sims is we just over talked to you again. I'm sorry, man. No, no, it's, I'm 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 here to listen. And send your up send your five hundred dollars to Paul this time, not to me. Okay. Okay. All right. It, we take it, Paul, it. you know what? Believe it or not, it's in the mail. Awesome. <laughs> You'll see. <laughs> Thank okay. You, Phil. So when you do your next podcast, you go, dang, Phil didn't lie. It's already in the mail. All right. We'll You'll see. see. We're looking for it. All, All right, big guy. Right, you guys Dad. have a great day. You're the man. See Thanks, you, Phil. See ya. Big Phil. Big Phil. He's the man. Oh, he's the man. He's yeah. been dying. So he, it he, killed him last week that he couldn't come on. You know, he had to do. He had to cover for my my brother and all that. But so, so he, he's he, he's been foaming. He's already in another football conversation. He hung up the phone and he's talking to somebody else. Oh, about, there's right? no doubt. There's no it's doubt. It's just all day long. Well, it, it is all day long, and he's he's the worst at. And, and and you know this is nothing. He like he'll want to sit there and he's probably got two quarterbacks in the draft. Yeah. He wants to watch today. Yeah. But. You know, a high school coach will call. Yeah. You know, oh, this quarterback called. Oh, I was talking to this coach in the NFL, and he'll, you know, I'll, I'll end up talking to him at 8.30 at night. You know, Christopher, I was going to watch this guy and this guy today, and yeah. they, damn, the days just slipped by. And I want to be like, well, yeah, you can't shut your I damn told mouth. You, That's I the I told problem. you that, that, that one time I went, went to the house and did the whole throwing thing. Yeah. And we watched film. Right. We, we get up and we're watching watching quarterbacks. I think it was the year Tannehill was coming out because we're yeah. watching him a lot. I'm like, this is really cool, man. I'm special. I'm watching film with Phil Sims. Yeah. Throughout the day, there were just dudes coming in. Constant. High school coaches uh -huh. would show up and stand in the corner, talk yeah. to them. They'd leave. A couple more coaches would come in. I mean, it's like an open door policy. Yep. If you love football, know where he lives. Come on over. No doubt. It's it's the way it is. And yeah. They they, they they're you know him him my brother, you know they they. They work with a lot of the top quarterbacks in North Jersey, yeah. uh, even in the, in the New York and Long Island and some of that. And they, you know, of course, we're pretty nice people. You know, yeah. Despite what you might think of me and whatever <laughs> else, we are pretty nice people to where, hey, coach, come over and watch your quarterback yeah. throw, and I'll teach you a little bit so you can stay on them during the year. And, yeah. and of course, it's a high school coach with the big f***er, and they love that. Oh, and then, of course. You know, oh, you know, and then it becomes, well, Matt and Phil, what about <laughs> this play? Show me a play. And then, you know, all of a sudden they're on the board drawing up plays, and you know, just do this, this, this. And, you know, the, co the high school coach is right there. This is awesome. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I never thought about that. And, and all day, every day. That's all he does. That's yeah. all he does. So, so Pete, th this is decision time here on third and seven. Uh, from a timing standpoint, do you want to do the defensive guys or do you want to go into quarterback jeopardy? I, let's do the deep. Let's do it. Yeah, we'll defense. do defense. Come on, we can hit on these. I'm Pete. It's, it, it's your show. It's not Pete <laughs> That's D all right. on button. Pete has an understanding okay. of the time. Yes. We want people to still listen to the podcast <laughs> and not be bored for two hours. Uh, okay. So, so let's do it. Go Ready ahead. Let's roll. hit it. Yeah. Defensive free agents. Edge defenders begin with Shaq Barrett. Yeah. Buccaneers put the franchise tag on Chris Godwin. Yeah. Barrett, what's going to happen? I, you know, that, that to me was the shocker of the day. You know, the, the, to me, said two things, right, with the Shaq Barrett not being franchised. First off, the Bucks getting the deal done with Levante David. Good for them there. You know, before he hit free agency, that's what always helps when you, you know, you got a good team. The guy's been here for a while. He doesn't want to uproot his family. I'd, I'd be shocked to think that somebody else out there wouldn't have gave him a little bit more money. Yeah. But he's made good money. I mean, we know that too. Um, but with the Shaq Barrett thing, there's, it's two things to me. Either one, they feel confident that they can sign him to the long-term deal still, and they go, well, we're going to figure this out here soon, and he wants to be here and all that. Or two, which is what I think, and, you know, Florio made this comment today, and I kind of forgot about it. Barrett said it's, he wants to break the bank in free agency. Yeah. And just between that comment, you know, his stock's never going to be higher right now. To me, that's what I think most realistically is happening, and they went, whoa. Shaq wants a lot of money. Let's just but let's let's get Chris Godwin and make sure we keep him. Right. And we could work that out. Or if we got to do a one-year franchise thing with Godwin, they can handle it. But I, to me, it speaks more to Shaq Barrett's got the word out there that he can get huge money, and Tampa's not willing to to give him that. You brought up Bud Dupree. Sounds like both you and your dad like him with Ooh, Pittsburgh. I love him. What would you like to see happen there? Well. Yeah, I, I, I mean, listen, I, I, it's all going to be about the status of his knee and where that is and everything like that. He is a difference maker. 
you know, he is truly one of the best edge defenders in football. And it's not all about sacks with Bud Dupree either. It's not all about that. You know, again, like the Leonard Floyds of the world and some of those guys, even Khalil Mack, you know, they can handle offensive tackles and double teams and dominate tight ends in the run game. They're the guy you want there. So, I, of course, I'd want to see him go out there, get big money. I just don't know what the status of that knee is. What He hurt his knee in, what, week 10 maybe, somewhere around there. I can't imagine it's going to be 100% by the start of training camp right. or early on in the year to where, you know, in my heart of hearts, I want to go, go back to Pittsburgh. They know what you're about. They're not, you're not going to feel the pressure of, I got to prove to my new team I'm good in training camp and everything and get out there and play. And the other thing is, is like, like we talked about, they got other guys on the front too to where, you know, it, it's a position to succeed, like Jameis Winston in New Orleans. That should matter. Right, that yeah. should matter to where, okay, yep, I didn't get the deal I want. I'll come back here one more year. I'm going to have a kick-ass year, show everybody I'm healthy. People know my potential and all that, and hopefully I can put some stats with it, and then he can go into the next year and, and hit big free agent money. So maybe, maybe it's a good one-year chunk type of deal. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a two-year deal that's really a one-year deal that he's got an option in the second year, something like that. But, you know, in my heart of heart, I guess that's what I want to see. I want to see him go back to Pittsburgh. That position to succeed ought to matter a whole lot. Should be conversations they have because they have to worry about Watt first. They've got to right. worry about the interior lineman. He's in a great spot there if he stays. And can't mess with anybody's business or money, but, I mean, there's some pretty good logic to stay in there. No doubt. And he, let's just say this. He fits on any team. He can play 4-3 defense end or 3-4 outside anywhere. linebacker. Right. It doesn't yeah. matter. You put him in the Patriots and they want him to play outside linebacker, he could do that. You want him to go to the Jets and go, hey, we want you just to be a down, three down lineman coming off the edge. You know, uh, I mean, three-point stands, down lineman like that, and a 4-3 defense, he'll be able to do that too. A lot of big names on here. Yeah. Clowney, Dunlap, yeah. Vernon, Leonard Floyd. I want to break them down into two categories. Okay. Who, who do you think is – who are you saying – Fool's gold, don't do it, don't give him all right. that money. Yeah, Clowney would be right off the bat the one where he'd go, there's just too much injury history there. Be freaking careful, all right? I mean, that, that, and I think that's an obvious one. I don't think I'm breaking any news there, that one. The other two, to me, are these, uh, the, the, uh, you see a team fall in this trap every year. The Hassan, Hassan Reddick and, and Trey Hendrickson mm. would be the two guys I'd go, Hey, everybody out there, don't just watch this year and just go, oh, this year it was good. And look at the quality of the sacks. How did he actually get the sacks? Those type of things. So that would be the ones I'd go be buyer beware. You know, because, you know, those are the kind of guy that, you know, people will be able to sell, like, look, we signed him. He had all these sacks this year. And, you know, I just don't think they're true difference makers. They're good players, don't get me wrong. But I think this is more of a what I, these past years more of an aberration. Is that my saying? That aberration. Right? Aberration. Excuse yeah. me. Rather than the <laughs> the real them. Right. Uh, and I, again, I think they're good players, but not like as sack sexy as those two were this year. How much is Crocodile Dundee worth? <laughs> aberration. Aberration. Wasn't, wasn't that? You're right. I think it might, the first one was. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're right. It might have been the aberration. I can't remember. Don't ask me. I'm not smart enough. <laughs> Uh, okay, and the, people the, ask me a lot of times, like, why, how, how do you tell the truth so much? Or why are you so? Because I'm not smart enough to remember the bullshit. I can't remember my own bullshit. So that's when I made a decision to just go on and, and be truthful and just say it how it is. All right, the other side of the edge rushers. Uh, yeah. who, who do you think provides the best value and will be a great signing? Well, I'm a huge Leonard Floyd fan. Yep. That to me is a no miss signing. You know, he got a little bit of part of the top eight pick with the Bears and the sacks weren't there and it fell out of favor with the town and the, and the city and everything like that. But to me, it's still one of the premier edge defenders in football. Again, I don't expect him to be in the 10 to 12 sacks per year type of thing ever, but I think he'll be consistently around eight, seven with a ton of disruption and that's really his beauty. So Again, I don't know what his price tag is going to be in a year like this. This would be another, another thing where he might, you know, not get the total money he wants or it's a short-term short deal or anything like that. But, man, Leonard Floyd is the guy I look at to go. Like the Tennessee Titans. Mm. You, you want – you need edge – you want a Jadeveon Clowney? Well, this is Jadeveon Clowney right now. This is the guy. Leonard Floyd is Jadeveon Clowney now. Oh, you want to stand him up a middle slot linebacker, let him rove around and then run through the A-gap, put him on the edge – 
you know, put his hand down, drop him into coverage. Floyd can do all that. Like, that's where I look at him with, like, the Tennessee Titans, uh, something like that. That can make sense. Let's kick it inside. Yeah. Defensive tackles, two questions. Since there's not a lot of huge name recognition value here, underrated name that you like the most? Well, I think the guy I look at, right, I mean, there's Sheldon Rankins in New Orleans, who's flash, but, I mean, it's two Achilles tears. That would scare me. Mm. You know, Larry Ogunjobi from the Cleveland Browns is a real solid football player. He has flashes, too. We know Sue's out there. I think the guy I look at, though, that could end up, you know, signing for more money or having – is the Dalvin Tomlinson. You know, to me, again, with, with as multiple as offenses are getting and everything like that, to me, I, I think you might have heard me. I think size is going to come back into play a little bit on these defensive lines where they're just going to go, wait, we're going to get really f***ing big up front, and if you try to run it on us, okay. It, it gives you more versatility is what I'm saying, to have that size. But like a true run stuffer and what he can do in that aspect, nose tackle, to eat up double teams, just absolutely clog running lanes and everything like that, I think Tomlinson's really damn good. I would think there's going to be some play for him out there. You think Sue should go back to Tampa? Yes, I do. You know, it's going to be, again, I got a guy who's, it's the price. You know, and, and it's, it's, it's how much are they willing to allocate to that D line? You know, yeah, there's Golston there who's a good player. JPP's making pretty good money. I would think they want to pay Vita Vea some point soon. For Vita sure. Vea is a superstar right. if he could just stay healthy. And then we have the Devin White thing coming down the mm. pipe, too, at some point here in the next two years, too. So that's where they got to balance. I don't know if Sue doesn't price himself out. I do expect him back. He's still a real good football player. Linebackers, you brought up the Buccaneers, Levante David, two yeah. years, $25 million. I think we both like the fact that he's staying there. First name on the list that comes to mind here, Matt Milano, Buffalo. Do you think he's worth more or less than what David got in Tampa? Um, I, it's a close one, but I would say – for where he is in his career, I would say, yeah, he's a ha worth a hair more. Mm -hmm. I do. Milano is really Wind awesome. healthy. He's everywhere. He is everywhere. He is phenomenal football player. I mean, he is an upper echelon, upper echelon type middle linebacker. Right. Right. And to me, I look at him as going, yeah, that's, that's the guy in free agency. That's kind of the crown jewel out of your stand-up middle For linebackers. Sure. And just, you know, two teams that jump out to me right off the bat with huge needs and money, right? It goes back to Cleveland. Mm. I, again, Cleveland, they want to make that defense work. I, they got to get somebody in there like that. So that makes sense. He fits that scheme. It's not that far off from what he did with McDermott and Buffalo and everything like that. And then the other one is the Philadelphia Eagles. The Eagles stink at linebacker. Like, mm. they got some money to spend. That, to me, would make sense, too. And... They're going to run that same defense, too. The Colts, the Browns, it's all that Seattle scheme-ish type thing. So those are two that money needed the position. I could see that, that happening. K.J. Wright was good for a long really time Really good player. Seattle. What's he still have left? Still, he's still got value. I mean, he's one of those guys. I, I mean, it, it really is amazing where I thought it was going to fall off, and it just hasn't, you know, it, it's not the same as it was four or five years ago, but it's still really good. Like, to me, I look at that and go, like, I just think in New England a little bit. Like, oh, week two or week three of the free agency when everybody's kind of like, oh, we got our stars and we got our studs. And then here comes New England. To, hey, we'll, we'll take this guy for two years, and he could play outside linebacker. He could play middle linebacker. Seems perfect, doesn't it? And it makes, he's that kind of yeah. guy. So, yeah, he, he jumps out. And here's one other one yeah. that I'm a fan of. And when he's healthy, I, he, he sticks out to me is Jared Davis of the, of the Detroit Lions. I know it's not a huge not household a name, name yeah. but I think he's one of those guys where he could get signed to a team, not huge money, but next year we're going, man, Jared Davis was some hell of a free agent signing and all of that. More of an inside or yeah, outside Yeah, more guy? of an inside. And he, can, and he can do either one. He could be a 3-4 inside or 4-3. I mean, he's got some thumping ability, and he can really run too. So I, I'm, I'm a fan of Jared Davis. Cornerbacks. Yeah. Big group. I know you like this group yeah. as well. Who is your, who's your leadoff? Yeah, the, uh, William Jackson. William Jackson, to me, is the guy that's going to surprise everybody, and you're going to go, whoa, they're paying him that? He is an island corner. He is a guy, if you watch the Bengals, 
they match him up with the best receivers in football. And, you know, there's going to be plays out there where we're going to go, whoa, he got beat. Of course. Well, no shit. He's covering a guy that's on a 100-yard field that's, you know, 52 and a third yards wide, and they're just going, cover the greatest athlete on the planet. I mean, that's not that easy. You're going to get burned sometimes that way. But I think he is an elite corner. I mean, as Pete will tell you, I've been a guy that's uh, been a big fan of his, uh, you know, ever since he came out of, uh, let's see, Houston, right? I think he's Houston. I think right next to the edge rushers, I mean, cornerbacks is, is most likely for teams to spend on them because of how much they, they value that position. So yep. who do you think is on the way to, to getting a, a bigger payday than maybe his play deserves? Oh, oh, bigger play day than maybe his play deserves. Well, it's hard not to look at that and think of like Richard Sherman or Patrick Peterson. I think those are the two I look at to where there's a lot of name value there. And I'm not, again, I'm not trying to sit here and tell you they, they can still play, but those are probably guys that are I, where I'm, at least I'm going to look at and go, man, I wouldn't have paid him that much money at this yeah. point of his career. Somebody you will. Know, yes. And uh, yeah. I think those two jump out to me maybe uh, as far as that conversation is concerned more than others. Okay. How about this route? Yeah. If you're not going to go after a William Jackson, but you do need to improve Another the depth guy. and quality. Right. And you want someone who can play corner the traditional way. Right. Maybe can come in and play slot corner. Yeah. God, if you're really in a pinch, he could play one of the safeties too. Well, you know, Chidobe Wuze can do a little bit of that. Like, didn't have the best year last year, but who the hell had a good year last year in Dallas? I mean, come on, it was a f***ing disaster. I mean, they, you know, they couldn't really pressure the quarterback. They couldn't stop the run, all that. He can be a guy that can kind of do it all. But I'll say this. Here's the guy that I look at to go, people, this is my, my, my Robin Hood, where people are going to go, wait, we're going to pay this guy this much money? Really? And that's Brian Poole of the Jets. He's the guy that I look at of all the free agents. And listen, I like Kevin King. You know, I think Ronald Darby still got a little left in him. Quentin Dunbar, Mackenzie Alexander. Sure, I think A.J. Bouye still has some value out there as a pure cover corner. There's a lot here on this list. There, there's a lot. There's no doubt. But I look at, at, at Poole from the Jets as being a guy that is going to command a little bit more of a market maybe than, you know, the, the average fan realizes. How much do you think Kevin King is hurt this time of year based off of the way his season finished? Uh, it, it's, yeah, people are going to look at that that last game because it, what happens too with free agency is you, 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 a lot of times you look at, oh, wait, there's a free agent corner? Oh, let's watch the teams that had really good receivers and see how he did that. And you're going to turn on the Bucks game and you're going to go, what the hell? Um, but I still think there's a market for him. There's no doubt. He's a Seattle scheme type guy to me because he's really long and he can run. So you want to play that three deep. Oh, jam me at the line of scrimmage and you're never going to really get deep behind me. Um, now, you know, the, the, AFC, the NFC championship game was, was yeah. stupid. Yeah. I don't know what the hell he was thinking. But William Jackson is it's the, the guy. guy I look to break the bank. And for these reasons, you know, the teams that need corners got a lot of money. And that's where, I mean, the Bengals, of course, they still got money, so maybe they want to pay him. You know, the New York Jets have we talked about, they got stupid money, mm -hmm. so they could, they could go, oh, we'll pay you a little bit more than everybody else. I still think the Indianapolis Colts need something. The Colts, to me, that's their one issue. You know, I, I don't think they're a great man-to-man -man football team when they need to be. Um, Washington, uh, the Washington football team, they got money, you know, and that, that front four, you get a corner like that. And the Carolina Panthers, there's another team that I'll throw out there that have true needs, got money, and I can see them, you know, maybe spending it on a guy like William Jackson. Safeties. I remember a conversation a couple weeks ago, John right. Johnson, you liked him a whole lot. I do. Why do you think the Rams haven't figured out a way to keep him? I just think that, you know, in my heart of hearts, they're going, wait, we were, we're kind of still paying for Jared Goff. We just got Matt Stafford. We got the highest paid defensive player in football in Aaron Donald. And we got the highest paid corner in the history of football in Jalen yeah, Ramsey. And they just can't. And they're pretty good at evaluating DBs in the draft. You, you know, they, they, they are. So they probably go, okay, we're just going to have to make it happen that way. And maybe a value signing in free agency or something like that. But, yeah. What's he worth out there, Johnson? I, I, you know, again, I think Johnson's one of those guys that's, you know, fringe top five, top five safeties in football. I'm not going to say he's top five, but here, I'm going to just bring this up just while we're sitting here and talking about this, just so I can give a little bit more perspective here. But like, you know, all right, Buda Baker, 
Eddie Jackson, Kevin Bayard, Landon Collins, right? They're, they're all at $14 million a year. Justin Simmons now with his free agent, I mean, his, his tag is at 13. To me, he's right there in that range. You know, to me, he's a 13, 14 million dollar a year. You know, it's the new year and mm -hmm. all of that. Yeah, I think he is worthy of that. I do. You know what? Yeah, Devin McCourty's making 11. He's the next down. Yeah, to me at this point in his career, of course, I'm taking Joe Johnson. No doubt about it. Kareem Jackson was making 11. So Joe, ja yeah, I expect Joe Johnson to, you know, have a market and get something. John Johnson, excuse me. Uh, make somewhere in that $13, $14 million a year range. How big is the gap between Johnson and Anthony Harris? Oh, I, I think where I like Johnson is just his range in the pass game and everything like that. Harris still brings a lot of value to the foot. I mean, he's, he will throw his body around. You know, he is good in coverage, not to the way John Johnson is. Um, he's older than John Johnson, too. So, yeah, I think there's a, a solid gap there between John Johnson and Anthony Harris. Best value in the safety group. Ooh, they're, they're, that's a good one. Um, uh, when, when I guess I look at the whole group in general, I would probably look at guys like, you know, Jaquaski Tart is always a guy I look at to go, damn, he's a really good football player. You know, you might not have to pay him a ton of money. He got hurt this past year, had that. I like that. The other one, too, that just jumps out to me, right? And, again, it's going to come into the medical mm. and all of that. I know where you're going. Ken O'Neill. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Ken O'Neill is one of these guys where it might be a little bit like Bud Dupree. He might just sign a one-year deal or two-year and just go, I'm going to bet on myself. I got to be healthy. I know that. Yeah. But when he is healthy, he is a specimen. Yeah. He's a phenomenal difference-making type safety. Uh, so that would probably be the guy I'd look at there. That's a defense right Ooh, there. Oh, baby. That's a defense. That is the defense. Booyah. Before we get into quarterback Jeopardy, which is a, a, a pretty difficult rendition of quarterback Jeopardy, I, I must say. I mean, do you, no, like, seriously, do you, oh, say, is, this, you say this every week? It's because I'm excited about it. Because <laughs> I spent some time looking at it, and I, I feel good about what we've come up okay, with. Okay, good, good, yeah. good. That's so all that is. You're looking to embarrass me on uh, your 50th <laughs> birthday is what you're telling me. <laughs> have you seen this? I have. Have you seen this right yeah, here? Yeah. So go ahead and hold that up for everybody watching. For everybody who's not watching, what Chris has there in his right hand and I have in my left. Players' Championship Series coming up this weekend. Starts Thursday. Golf says, Channel. Says NBC. the players. Yep. And it's, uh, if it looks like there's something inside, that is a replica of the famous 17th green there at Sawgrass. Oh, That's what that the is. one that everybody hits the ball in the water on. Right. I'd love exactly. it. If there's one, goal, if one hole in golf I could play, that'd, one. Be, that'd be one of them yeah. for sure. I'd choke my ass off and hit it in the water every time. <laughs> it would be fun to try, though. <laughs> right. If, if you are interested in, in this, golfchannel.com slash players sweeps. And th there's some discrepancy on whether this – comes out and, and gets cold it, in the freezer? It says you're supposed I, to. I think I, this green is in there for good. It says store the cube glass in your freezer. So I don't know if they mean the whole glass or does this come off the whole, the thing. whole thing? Okay, good there. thing, Chris, okay. and good thing you told me in time because I was about to try to rip that damn thing off and go, Should I drink out of this tonight for my birthday? I think you should. Yeah. I mean, it looks appropriate. I'll send you a picture. You as well, Pete. Pete's doing something. Okay, thank you, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> he was tending to a kid. All right, so now, quarterback Jeopardy. Yep. All right, everything else has just been kind of fun and games. But settle into, settle into what's really happening here. You ready? Yep, I'm ready. Okay, so draft quarterbacks, kind of the theme. Draft quarterbacks. Yep. Okay. Wide range here for 100. Looks like the Jaguars are poised to take a quarterback at one overall. Actually, the first time they've ever held the number one pick. But who are the three quarterbacks previously drafted in the top ten? by the Jaguars. So in their franchise history, I think they started 94. Right. They've taken three quarterbacks in the top 10. Ooh, wait, this is a good one. Yes. So Blake Bortles yes. is one because that's go. one of the dumbest yep. picks yep. in the history of football. <laughs> All right. That happened in 2011. He right. was the 10th pick. Oh my gosh. Wait, hold on. Oh, they took Blaine Gabbert. Yes. I almost forgot about that. Yep. Okay. I'm sorry. Blake was number three and 14. Gabbert was the 10th, 2011. There's one other. Oh, Byron Leftwich. Booyah. Yeah. Oh, I was nervous there. When you first said it, I was going, wait, they've had three top yeah. ten? Yeah. Yeah. You, I forget about Blaine Gabbert. Left, which was my year, I would have got to that no okay. matter what. I was going to throw out a hint that he was also involved in the Super Bowl. Yes, this, right. Blaine Gabbert was one. as well. Yes, right. Okay, 200. The Jets are also believed to be in the quarterback game at number two, even though they've drafted four quarterbacks since 2015. I would like for you to name those four. Four quarterbacks. To since... the Jets in 14. 
I'm going to blank on the guy's name from last year. We, I, we talked about him. I know. Yesterday, Wednesday? Yeah. We talked about him Monday. I know, because he was one of the guys. I had a question. I had a social question. He was down the road and said he has a chance yes. to be something. And I was impressed because you clearly knew a lot about him. Yes. And because I, I like he He's one of those guys you draft later on the draft because you yeah. go, wait, there's some talent. Let's come uh, back to that. I, yeah, I cannot think of his damn name we off can the come top. Back to Florida that. Atlantic. I mean, I got it. I know yeah. the freaking guy. I just can't think of the name. Okay. So you got him. We got we got no name guy. No name guy. Yeah. 2014, you said, right? Is that when we're going for? Him? That was 2020. I know, but so when's it start? When's this? 2015 15. is when it started. So in 15 and 16, they took one both years. Oh crap. Neither one turned out. No. So Gino was before that. This is, this yeah. is after Gino. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold one's on a second, second rounder, one's a fourth rounder. Oh, they took Hackenberg. Yes, Christian which Hackenberg in round two. Also, the, it's the second dumbest pick in the history of quarterbacks behind Blake Bortles. They took Browning Nagel at one point early, too. That back, was when, pretty, back when Big Phil was, was playing across bad. town. Okay. So that's, that's, that's one and a half. You've yeah. got Hackenberg and no name guy. Yep. 2015, they took a fourth rounder. 2015, they took a fourth rounder. Yeah. Damn. You think I'm gonna get this one or no? I, th I think with a, I think with a hint, it's a it's a name you definitely know. Is I he think, still in the league? No, no. No. I think he played where Mahomes played. Ah. I think he's a Texas Tech guy. Pete, am I misleading him here? Oh, same same state. He played at Baylor. I'm sorry. Damn, that's even worse. Baylor. That made it worse. I can't think of who the hell bail. Oh, 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 oh. Gosh damn it. Hold on a second here. He has yeah. my initials reversed. You know, I, I, I know he's, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Bryce Petty. Yes. Right. Okay. Thank you. We'll that, was a, you that. that was a cheat. Okay. That was, that was so cheating a little. The, the, the third one happened in 2018. That This is a slam dunk obvious. Nothing's obvious right now. I'm flustered. This is, this is obvious. Jets quarterback. They drafted in 2018. 2018. Hold on a second here. Let me rack my brain here. This is this is uh, <laughs> 2018. Took him uh, in the top five. Yeah, it took him to number three. Oh my God! I'm an idiot. <laughs> Sam Darnold. <laughs> I was thinking way. Is there uh, something in Chris's oh class gosh. over there? No. I, I wasn't even thinking first round quarterback. Okay. James Morgan. That's the name. Dan, I, that so should count. James Morgan should count. I got it. I got it. I didn't get the Bryce Petty. You gave me too many clues uh, there. Yeah. And Sam Darnold was just totally stupid. That I mean, was going to go blonde. to the committee to see if it sticks. I'm a blonde. I, that's all I could say. I think I'm willing to give you half, <laughs> that was a so, half point. The, the Sam Darnold thing was so obvious. I was like, I, yeah. was, I was too deep thinking of that one. It was oh a my layup. Gosh. I mean, it was a layup. I mean, sometimes those Damn. get messed. Damn. Hey, you can't call yourself a historian and you get that shit wrong. <laughs> 300. I'm thinking about, uh, that, so this is brought up here because of in the draft, Justin Fields. Yeah. I'm thinking Justin Fields and we're thinking Big Phil. Okay. Okay. 300 after the Giants won the Super Bowl in 86. Season opener in 87 took them to Chicago. Monday night game against the Bears. The Bears sacked the old man seven times. Oh, yep. I they was won 34 19. I was there. They made me cry that night. Really? Yeah, the Bears fans. They made me cry. They did. They were rude. <laughs> did they know who you I, were? I was seven years old. Yes, they did. Did you have a Sims jersey on? No, but I mean, I looked like my dad. My hair was the blondest hair in the whole stadium. <laughs> did you? And they made me cry. And fans are assholes. You know, those are like people. And they you, sacked them seven that's times. That's people where you put on your list where you go, if I ever see that guy again when I get older, yeah, I'm going right? to kick the shit out of that guy. I understand. But, I'm um, laughing, but I understand. That so, my dad almost got murdered in that game. Seven sacks. You need to, it, really, I'm not even joking. You guys want to watch a good laugh? Yeah. Watch 1987 week one Giants versus the Bears. Dad got knocked unconscious. He got knocked out cold. We need to ask the him. The defense was borderline And he illegal. came back in like seven plays later. Like yeah. he was asleep on the field. But, you know, yeah. there was no concussion protocol right. then. And, yes, yeah, so go ahead with your questions. So, yes. Who was the Ohio State alum as the opposing quarterback that night? Oh, because, yeah, Jim wasn't playing. Uh, is, it, it, is it Tom Zach? Yes. Mike Tom Zach? Yeah. Right? Yep. Well, yeah, boom. Very nice. That, those, are, those are my years. I knew years. that was there, yeah. That was, those are my years. Very well done. Man. I'm sorry it was a bad memory. It's okay. Sorry you cried at Soldier it's a, Field. It's actually a great memory now. It's yeah. great. No, back then it wasn't that great. And right. I had to have, we actually had somebody from our hometown who was there at the game. I was there with my mom, Dirty Diana, and my <laughs> Aunt Wendy, and it was just us three. Yeah. And we were sitting like an eighth row, right? 
And the Bears fans were brutal to us. And, yeah. like, you know, they would, like, they, they taunted me the whole game. But one of the dads from our hometown, he got wind that we were down there later in the game, and he came down and escorted us out because he was, like, he, I, I think he was not sitting far away, and he finally realized it was us and everything, and he kind of was a nice gentleman and helped us there. Yeah. 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 That's quite a memory. Old kick, Soldier kick Field. Kick your ass, whoever, if I ever find you. <laughs> I still remember his face, too. He can send it. Oh, really? I do. I remember wow. that. You're dead serious. Yeah, I'm dead serious. I'd yeah. like to kick his ass, yeah. 400. Dak yeah. Prescott, now a very rich cowboy. Right. The payday seemed like a long way away when he was the eighth quarterback taken in 2016. If you can name four of the seven taken before him, we won't tag you at your next contract. Oh, my time. gosh. I hate you guys with this stuff. Okay, now let's break this down here. I know. I got to get to 2016 mode. That's where I get okay, into so this. Okay, so 2016, two are as obvious as can be. Two, two are giveaways. That's so, why we put the number so four. So, wait, 2016, that's not the Jameis Winston. Uh, nope, that's nope. not Mariota draft. Hold on. I just got to think of I gotta think of the draft here. 2016... Is okay. Okay, wait, wait. I gotta, I gotta figure out who, what year, what year we are here. It's gonna take me a second. Let me know if you want, if you want a couple of very fair hints. Yeah, like, give me a fair hint. Okay, Just so 2016. Yeah. Two of these guys taken at one and two, are not have, on, been, have been in the news. This right. Season. So it's Wentz and Goff. There Thank you go. You. That's so where I just two. need to get going. Okay. So now here comes the tough part. Oh. Two other names, and again, Dak Prescott, eighth quarterback taken. So seven before, and you got two of the names. Two other quarterbacks that went before Dak Prescott. Any two. Paxton Lynch. Very well done. And who else am I missing there? Paxton One of the names Lynch. has been said already. It has, huh? And a different different uh, different answer or D different different, so different that, part I mean, of the round. Yes. Oh, damn. Uh, yeah. 2016. Was one of the Jets guys there that the, that year? Yeah, and, and that's Bryce Petty again? No, no. <laughs> damn it, Hackenberg. Oh, Hackenberg. Yeah. Damn it. Yep. How can you do that? How could you draft Hackenberg before that? I know, right? Right. Yes. And uh, we've got Jacoby Brissett. Oh. We've got Cody Kessler. Oh. And Connor Cook. Oh. That should have been for 500. That's I think. all right. I think that was a it. good one. That was hard. That, that, was, that, that, was, that was good. That That's was good. hard. I like it. I like it. It's all right. I got no problem with it. Pete, um, Pete's feeling yeah, bad Jacobi, that we allowed that one, that we let that one Jacobi slip Jacobi by. Jacoby Brissett, he was, I liked him coming out that year. Yeah. Who else did you say? Cody Kessler I was Cody not Kessler. a big fan of. Yeah. Who, and what was the other name there? You said Connor Cook. Connor Jacobi Cook, Brissett, yeah. yeah. Remember, oh, Connor Cook. Yeah, people thought he was a first-round pick. Negative. I think you're going to get 500. Okay. You have Mac Jones rated higher than most others. You have him as your third quarterback. Right just led Alabama to its sixth national title under Nick Saban. Before Nick got there, the Tide's last championship came in 1992. Right. Who was the quarterback oh, of that team? Gosh, yep. They, um, oh, they beat Miami down there in the Sugar Bowl. Yep. I can remember. Uh, he, he, he wore number seven. He was a fifth-round pick in the 95 oh, draft of the right. Packers. Oh. So he was young when he beat them. No, ne I know. He wasn't in really NFL. an NFL type cal cal caliber quarterback. Man, they beat Gina Toretta. I want to say something. Uh, I'm gonna, I know I know this name. I want to say Palmer, but it's not Palmer. It, it's of that. It's of that. It, it's it's of that. sounds, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to get it, so go ahead. Okay. Jay Barker. Oh, P Parker. Jay Barker. Barker. Jay Barker. Barker. Damn. Yeah. Nice yeah. college quarterback. It's been a long time since I heard that name, but right? yeah, right. Yeah. Nice college quarterback. That was one of those. That was one of those games as a young kid where you just went, like, Miami's going to steamroll them. Like, right. there's no yeah. way. Like, Miami was the best team in football for, like, every year when I was growing up there at that point. I went and then back Alabama and looked, whooped yeah. their ass. We played Miami in 92 in the season opener. Did and you they, really? They had, I mean, they had Warren Sapp. Right. I mean, that, their defense was unbelievable. Thinking of defense, though, that Alabama defense, if yeah. you remember that game, yeah. I went back and looked. They had double-digit players drafted the same, off that defense. Yeah, right. Uh, most of them in the first round. Both defensive ends, like Copeland and Hand. Oh, gosh. Uh, Man, I wouldn't have remembered that. They had the safety, George T. Yes. I remember. Yeah. I know. There's Sam some other Shade guys. Oh, gosh. Name. Yeah. Uh, I think they had Antonio London. Is that a Maybe. That sound right? I'm not, I can't verify awesome that. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that was, that was a cool. That was a big upset. There's a show. That's a show. Woo! -woo! Paul's 50th birthday. Yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for making a big deal. That, hey, that, come that's on. Nice. You're a big deal. I appreciate deal. that. We like you. No, I mean, there's we a like lot of reasons to feel bad about turning 50s. It's nice to have someone 
someone uh, say don't, nice things. Don't, so don't feel bad. That. And, you know, don't be afraid to get after the bourbon tonight. All right? I'm taking this. All right, take it. Put, yeah. it, put it on your tab. The hell with NBC Golf. Take it. They owe you something <laughs> for free anyways. All right? All Thank right, everybody. You. Peace out. We'll be back on Monday. We'll hit all the news. I'm still breaking through film, all of that. We're going to get back into draft mode. But here these next few shows, I think it's going to be more free agency news, things like that that are going on in the NFL. We'll break it down. And we'll find some few creative things to, to talk about as we go. Pauly, you Cheers. the man. Cheers. Happy birthday. Talk to you soon. Peace Thank out, you. everybody out there. Be good. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.